Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. Cyrus, Hello. how are you? I'm good, Joe. Pleasure to meet you. You also, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you you so have much. a fantastic voice, not just a singing voice, but your talking voice. It's very unusual. It's like it makes you step back a little bit. Like, oh, I've actually uh, recently I was walking around in Boston and I went to a museum and this like older man walked up to me. I had no idea who I was. He was just enjoying the art also in the museum and started talking to me forever about my voice and my and then there was a college some sort of trip to the museum and then everybody started freaking out and it was so cool just to have someone stop me about my speaking voice because that had never happened to me before i think because i was turned around and i had the mullet so i could have been you know anybody i could have been anyone it's a heavy voice it's a heavy voice um you didn't always have a heavy voice though like when uh, my kids love hannah montana by the way yeah so when i i would watch your your voice was different it's definitely changed i actually i kind of learned a lot about the voice and how our experiences affect our voice. I had a surgery in November on my voice. I had mm -hmm. something called Reiki's edema, which when my doctor told me about it, he said, no one shy ever has this. This is for abuse of the voice. <laughs> this is for people that talk way too fucking much. And usually this happens when you're like in your 60s or 70s. A how do I not singers. have that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Mine, I think honestly... Really, I, I started touring, you know, at probably 12 or 13. And not only was I, the adrenaline that you have after a show, it's not really the singing that affects your voice as much. It's afterwards, you're totally on. And then it's really hard to get that sleep. You stay up, talking all night. Later, the talking all night turned into smoking all night. And now this is kind of where we're at. <laughs> we got some dirt on her. You know, she the, yeah. the voice can be like like a face. It collects wrinkles and and it tells a story. If you look at yourself and you go, oh, I didn't have this until these this trip. You know, I sat out in the sun or I partied too much or whatever. And your voice does the same thing. It collects dirt. It's very distinctive. Yeah. Yes, it gives me away. Um, I mean, I'm pretty much one of the only chicks in LA with a mullet, so that gives me away also. <laughs> well, you're not in the right neighborhood. There's plenty. Of, <laughs> I plenty know. I gotta dry out to the to the desert. I guess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go out to Joshua Tree. Yeah, exactly. Find the chicks that are tripping. Exactly. Yeah, with handmade tattoos. I have they a couple all... of those too. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something very distinctive about a, a voice that you earned. You know. It's true. It's kind of like you know when you see somebody and and I, I think. I think especially being like a female in the industry, I think growing up and changing and like kind of that there is such a kind of stigma with aging. It's a very kind of scary thing as a female in the industry. And mm. um, I thought about it a lot and thought about my voice. I actually had someone when I was doing an interview a couple months ago said, you know, she sounds like she stayed up all night smoking too many darts. And I said, well, I fucking have. <laughs> um, and that's just the truth. And if, yeah. you know, that was anyone else, you know, it's kind of like you're weathered or you're aged or you've been through it. And, you know, we'll talk about it as we go but there there over the last year i noticed a really big change in my voice kind of a heaviness to it and i experienced some heavy things and so i feel like it is a reflection it is kind of a, a scar in a sense um but also just by having the surgery was kind of a gift also because i was able to understand my instrument no one ever explained that to me you know i sat in a room with the piano and did scales and shit but no one taught me about how do you have longevity? You know, right. you are in here with athletes all the time and, and recovery days are the most important days. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get recovery days. There, right. That was not important for someone that was making so much capital for such a big corporation. You know, the off days mm. are days that, that money's not coming in. And, and I, I definitely probably didn't get the training that I needed to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to do this till I'm 15. I want to do this till I'm 80. And that wasn't always considered. Definitely not complaining. It gave me an amazing launch pad for everything I'm doing now, but I hear it. But it had to be really odd to be working that much and be a young girl. The balance it trained me to have is something that I don't think you are going to get taught any other way besides jumping in the deep end of the pool and hoping you know how to swim. That's the only way. I There was no way I could have prepared for the amount of balance I would have to learn to kind of teeter because, you know, at one point, again, it, it went from it was school, then it went from, you know, how many how much weed can I actually smoke and still play a teenage superstar on the Disney Channel? <laughs> and then like and then like what's the answer to that question? 
more than you would fucking think. <laughs> um, I remember one time when, and I don't smoke anymore, and I'm sober. Uh, How long have you been sober But for? I, I've been sober since the pretty much the vocal surgery kind of did it for me um, because I just learned so much about the effects, which, again, you're just not taught. Um, it's not really the drinking. It's staying up all night. You know, once you have your drink, you end up smoking. And I kind of, I, I have a... I've become the face of a lot of things kind of against my will, I guess, from my opinions. When you're someone in my position, your opinion becomes your identity. And mm. it also becomes kind of almost like a, you kind of become this like preacher. You become this, you know, they don't really let you just always have your own opinion. So I've decided to start telling people I live my own lifestyle. Alcohol was never my problem. There was other things that I end up, you know. I like to go up, so I I now just avoid really drinking because I, I I like to wake up at 110 percent, um, but it's never really been my problem, and I could see myself having a drink of celebration in the future. But I get so fucking hungover now that I'm like, why would I celebrate with like just feeling like a volcano's erupted in my brain, you mm -hmm. know? So so it's really just a personal preference, but it's definitely not anything that I promote. In I think it's a lifestyle everyone should be. I think everyone should experiment. It's a good time and you learn a lot of things about yourself and the people around you but now I'm, I'm watching I have younger siblings and they're going through that and I don't know how my mom did it with me because it's scary yeah I don't think I think if we're gonna acknowledge the fact that all these things exist cocaine exists pills exist marijuana exists we should teach people how to do it right yeah we really I mean you're leaving yeah. children it's the same thing with sex right yeah we leave children to their there there's the information that they're gonna get is from other kids yeah and if you're learning about sex from another 14 year old hmm. or you're learning about coke from a 14 year old yeah. that's not good yeah like someone we, we play this game with children where we try to pretend that you know they live in a movie all right well listen to this It's actually funny you bring this up because i had the idea this week not that i really have time to do this in the near future but i would like to at some point in my life i want to do my own children's book series of realistic children's stories mm. because i don't like the idea that we teach them that this is sunshine world and everyone walks right. on a rainbow and everyone's equal and you need to say like that's not what are you going to do about it that's right. not true what are you going to do about it and i think there's a way to not terrify children of life even though I go in and out of periods where I think life is really overwhelmingly terrifying um, and that's coming from my position and my position I, I tell myself all the time if you're not enjoying this life honey you got it coming in the next one because I better fucking love this life it's the best one I, I couldn't imagine being in a different body well, and having a different experience it's an awesome life if you do it the right way it's an awesome life and I also I didn't hurt myself beyond repair in my experiences I survived and I don't even mean heart still beating survival I mean I have a lot of people that love me around I didn't kick all the people that had my best interest at heart out that's the that's where you die is you mm. kick everyone that says hey are you, yeah. are you okay you know out no of course I'm okay you don't trust me get the fuck out right. and so now that I have people that I've had in my life I feel that I have people in my life that I've known for 15 20 years and not many people in my position get to say that my parents are awesome my dad's loopy as hell but I love him so much <laughs> um, he, he has no way of ever hearing this because my dad doesn't have Wi-Fi or uh, anything but a Blackberry so I can tell you what I got him for his a birthday my dad has two Blackberries which equal an <laughs> iPhone which is not true but that's what he says so for his birthday he said that he wanted to see if he could go 365 days without eating pizza because he had never done it before so my dad <laughs> has now gone a year without having pizza and my dad loves bubble baths he's going to kill me for saying this but his country ass loves bubble baths that's a Hilarious. And so he loves to smoke his joint, eat his pizza, and get a bubble bath. So he said, that's what I'm going to do for my birthday. So for his birthday, I've organized a five-foot pizza to be delivered to his farm so he can have all he can eat. And I'm the pizza delivery person on the box. I had someone draw it where it's me with my tongue out and a mullet <laughs> delivering the pizza. And I got a bathtub on Craigslist, and I put it – my dad has 500 acres, so I put it in the middle of the farm filled with bubble gum, just like my music video. And so my dad's going to have a bubble gum bathtub and a five-foot pizza for his birthday. That's adorable. That's next week.
that I like the fact that he has no Wi-Fi and no internet. Good no Wi-Fi, him. no internet. Every Probably now and feels then, good that way. he'll drive to my uncle's house to FaceTime us every now and then. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, he has to make a drive to FaceTime. He does. It's not far. All of us are just like, my dad's kept us a, a, a pebble's throw away for sure. Mm. We all live on property. We all live really close to each other. So if you did this thing, like if you really decided to do uh, children's books, like realistic children's mm -hmm. books, like how would you do that? Would you get a ghost author and sort of come up with the ideas of what you were trying to get across to kids well what, what do you wish somebody told you i like that you mentioned that no one talks to us about drugs i know this is going to be controversial to introduce drugs to kids i think that there's a way and i have to think about it um wayne coin who's a good friend of mine and i did the dead pets record with him flaming lips have been my favorite band since i was in fifth grade and he's obviously an amazing artist and he just had his first child year and a half years old he's 60 just had a baby they're coming to visit me right now and um i would have him do all the illustrations so it stays in that kind of surrealist world because i think i think that's what would get the kids to want to read this book is that mm. that the illustrations are still surreal um and i like that about children's books but i do think that we do need to talk about you know, equality. And I do think there needs to be diversity in children's books. And I think also we just need to talk about the fact I was actually happy to talk to you today because I didn't get to do therapy today because I would with, be with you, but it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> and I was talking to him and I said, you know, sometimes it scares me that I'm too tough and, and I feel like I'm not jaded and I'm not cold, but I feel too tough. And he goes, well, I'm proud of that because life is tough and it's not to get hard. Well, what I, do you mean by that? What do you mean by you feel like you I don't like that you're too tough? I'm kind of soft. I feel that I worry sometimes that I can get over things easily. I don't fall to the floor and crawl up in a ball the way that I used to. And I think that's a part of me growing up. Like when, you know, I recently just went through a very public divorce that fucking sucked. What really sucked about it wasn't the fact that me and someone that I loved realized that we don't love each other the way that we used to anymore. That's okay. I can accept that. I can't accept the villainizing and the um, just all those stories that like it's just amazing to me that the public kind of thinks that there's no gap of time that they didn't see that could possibly be what led to this. Like it's not one day you were happy on the carpet and the next day you were making out with your friend in Italy. What the fuck? Well, there was a lot of time in between that that you didn't see. It didn't go. Yeah. I didn't like I didn't, you know. Yeah, but you can't rely on someone else's narrative, right? No, like, especially someone who doesn't know you. You really shouldn't even read what but, people write. about. Well, what's you. crazy is my dad again. You know, my dad's been a real figure in my life. And um, my dad, when he got his Grammy nomination, he wore a he went to the Grammys in a John 316 shirt and he, mm. he didn't get the Grammy. And the next day, the New York Post, someone put, even God can't save Billy Ray Cyrus in his <laughs> career. And he was sitting next to Johnny Cash. They were going to something. I have a Johnny Cash tattoo that was handwritten uh, to my dad from around that time. And he, he said, what the hell? Just like you say to me right now. You're my Johnny Cash. You know, he said, what the hell are you doing reading that? Yeah. And my dad said, I just never really picked up, picked up the paper again. But again, my dad didn't buy that paper. It was just kind of in your face. You should have thought that was funny. He, he does now. Now he just says, well, whatever will get Johnny Cash to come and sit next to me and talk to me. Now he, <laughs> now he loves it. Um, and it's been really good to have him go before me. You know, it's, it's kind of that buddy system. I think it'd be really scary if I wouldn't have been able to see that. But to your right. point of, I don't click on this shit. You know, it, it comes into my life by... If Other I walk people, by a magazine right. stand, which I like to walk yeah. on the street, and it says, like, Miley's on drugs... And pregnant, and then I think one of those things are true, but not the <laughs> other. Fuck you for lying about me. Yeah, but that's all they have. I mean, what when someone's in the public eye and someone's as prominent as you are, you become a, a way for them to access money. Right. That's all you are. Clickbait yeah. advertisement. And that's I it. totally get it. It's that unprogramming of... Also, I think what's interesting sitting here with you is that all of this is kind of new. Um... I mean, even just like the idea of podcasts, what I used to do when it was like promo time for a record. Okay, so I'm 12 years old and I'm printing physical copies of my album. So I have to write my fucking music, you know, six months before you actually. So I just did Dolly's new album for Christmas and I had to record a Christmas song in July. It was the weirdest thing I've ever done in my life. But when you make physical copies, that's what you do. And you're telling a story 
from always being behind, especially when it comes to the media. So now what I love about this, what I love doing, you know, a show like yours is like we talk about it right now. And people hear it right now, so you're getting the real information. Mm -hmm. You're not getting information from, all right, I, you know, I shot a magazine cover. I did an interview. I was la la in love with my boyfriend. I mean, that literally happened when I did Vanity Fair. I flew there like a week after I got married. By the time the damn thing was on the stands, I was divorced. It was old news. <laughs> it was like, come on, you know. So you're really not able to tell your story in real time, and that's what I love about the new way that music is happening and streaming. And I love the idea that like I threw up that um, uh, flaming lips record I did on SoundCloud and it was like you know no one had to buy it or right. I sound 105 but it's very exciting because I really hated always being behind myself and I think that's what now I can use my art as my kind of I guess the way that I can talk to the the press isn't what bothers me it's kind of the public you know mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I got in this habit where when people would meet me I guess I didn't get in a habit it just became a thing that happened constantly was I'd meet someone and they go Man, you're not as crazy as I thought you'd be. And I'm like, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I don't know what you thought I'd be doing right now. If you thought I'd be in like, you know, space buns dropping acid or something. But people say that to me all the time, that I'm not as crazy as they thought I would be. And that's just a weird thing to say to someone. Yeah, but the public image, like what they sold of you, you know, here you are, Hannah Montana, and then all of a sudden you're this very sexual singer, and you're doing all this crazy stuff, and you're on television shaking your ass, and everybody's seeing that, and like, oh, Miley Cyrus is out of control now, she's what? Yeah. So then that becomes the narrative, it's right? It's funny when people make the narrative when you become in control that now you're out of it. Yeah. That was always really interesting well, for Well, it's me. also youth, right? Like, like think about the marriage thing, right? You take, mm -hmm. you say, Vanity Fair, they write the article, you're deeply in love. By the time it comes out, you're already divorced. Right. That's so Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, to them, that's like, oh, we've seen this fucking story before. Yeah. We know where this is going. Also, you're a child star. Yeah. Oh, shit, we've seen this story before. And so you get stuck in that narrative too right because Absolutely. they want you to fall down the exact same path they don't want you to it's reinvent a familiar yourself past, yes. yes well th then they'll familiar spell story. it out for you this yeah. is what she's doing now she's I've, on drugs and she's pregnant i've had to con i've had to now i don't read those types of things but i've had to unlearn that they're not true because sometimes mm. i write things i write things down when I want something to get put into my head. Even if I'm gonna have a hard conversation with somebody, usually I kind of write a little mini script for myself. So I kind of know where I, I don't like going into something with no direction. Where do I want this to go? What are my goals? What do I want? That's what any of your athletes would do. It's like, I, I know that I have that as an artist. I wanna have a long career. I have to do the things to be able to have that um, longevity. And so I would write down you know, kind of a kind of an idea of where I'd want conversations to go, even with the people in my life and what do I want out of them. And I had to stop going, hey, just because they wrote that down, it's true. Because something about writing it down gives a lot of power. Mm. I don't like to write down things that I don't mean. That's why I don't write songs that I hate, because once you write it down, they are like alive. So you know? what you're saying is that like reading things that other people wrote about you made you think that those things were real. So yeah. it, it fucked with your own personal narrative. Yes. Like Sometimes I'd be trying yourself. to prove something that I didn't need to prove. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden I'd be trying to prove that I'm not crazy when I knew I wasn't crazy. Right. Um, and yeah, I just think also, I mean, when we're talking about realistic children's books i think the stigma that kind of uh surrounds you know youth growing up rebelling and then craziness and then what's the line between that and and mental illness and you know i do have some kind of genetic family history of alcohol i mean that totally gets erased when you're a celebrity it's like hollywood did this to you it's like no dude my great grandma was an alcoholic you know my granddad was an alcoholic my grandma's an alcoholic um you know so i I obviously had, it wasn't Hollywood, you know, mm -hmm. it's genetic. I think for you, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with writing a book and writing a, a realistic children's book, mm -hmm. but I think you could do a lot of good by just making little YouTube videos. Just yeah. you make little YouTube videos just talking and explaining, hey, this is what I did and this is where I fucked up and this yeah. is why you shouldn't do it this way. These are the drugs you gotta be really careful about. These are drugs yeah. that are really dangerous. 
And look, if you want to have like one drink, you want to have one drink. Yeah. Like just have one can. fucking drink. If you can. If you can. Yeah. yeah. If you want to, if you want to smoke weed, take a hit. Yeah. Like don't get crazy. Yeah. Like figure this out. Like you can have a good experience on marijuana, or you could fuck up your life and have a schizophrenic breakdown. And, and that's get one thing that paranoid. I felt like, you know, when I was smoking weed, like my mom, all the weed that I don't smoke, she takes care of both of my parents so i have nothing against weed my whole family's a bunch of stoners i i just felt like when you're talking about kind of some of the the episodes that they can kind of bring on they you can. know i maybe yeah. have a little some of those kind of tendencies already um and that's that's something that people who love marijuana don't like to talk about no and i'm pretty adamant about discussing that yeah i I, agree. I know people that have lost their fucking mind Me particularly too. on edibles yeah I, I know some people that literally became schizophrenic from and edibles. i and i really like looking at i like looking at facts like that and i don't mm -hmm. know you know i do think that there are i like i like information i'm a real i love to process new information um I love to receive new information. I love to go. How do you get your information? Are you a person who reads? Do you watch I, documentaries? I like read and I uh, kind of, I was going on a, I was going on a trip when I was maybe 17 years old and I was walking through the airport and I saw a book that said, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life by Dr. Daniel Amen, who's now been my therapist for 10 years. Oh. And I couldn't get on this plane. I was having a full anxiety attack. I was smoking a lot of weed. How I was taking you? a lot of shrooms. I was 17. 17, smoking a lot of weed and taking, taking a lot of shrooms. Taking a lot of shrooms. And I started getting a little... Yeah. I started getting a little cray-cray, you know, Don't sometimes... Don't recommend that. Doing some things with, you know... Causing some fights with my boyfriend that were unnecessary. They got heightened. Um, I remember one time I wrecked my car into my gate and I said, this is all your fault. I was the one driving the damn car. And how is this your fault? I did not have a great idea of reality at that right. time. So I was going to, I was leaving the country for the first time without my family. I was going to Costa Rica and I was walking through the airport and I saw this book, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. I'm like, I, I want to change my life. I don't like where this is going. And my brain is actually, I don't like who I'm living with. The person upstairs is like annoying the hell out of me. So I got this book and it got me to get onto the plane. Now I had a few anxious breakdowns on that when you know when you go to places like going in the middle of the jungle you take all those little planes and all of a sudden you're on a four-wheeler going to wherever mm -hmm. you're going every now and then i'd have to stop because i would get so lightheaded and stabbing chest pains and all this and he said drop weed first of all get rid of the weed get rid of the psychedelics and i also cut gluten from my diet from a little bit of a time so i could get an idea of like what's my body on a natural level and i started doing you know kind of blood work and I, I did some spec scans, which he specializes in. So like actually looking at my brain, because what I really like about the spec scan is, you know, you wouldn't tell me I have a broken arm without freaking looking at it. I could tell you, out, it hurts, blah, blah, blah. But like, what you is know. a spec scan? So mm -hmm. a spec scan, um, we might have to look up exactly what it stands for <laughs> because I don't, I don't remember this. But basically it's kind of like an x-ray and it kind of shows you almost like in those thermal type colors of the activity of your brain. Here there we go. Single photon emission computed tomography. Yeah, so I have one of these. Nuclear medicine study that evaluates blood flow and activity t in the brain. So that's my doctor, Amen Clinics. Mm. That's that's his uh, website right there. Mm. And so I, I have a couple of these. Um, How's your brain look? You know what? So he says this isn't right. Surprisingly good for the abuse that it's had. Well, I guess I stored it in my amount, throat. But exactly. the it's amount the of amount activity. Of time. And well, it's all, okay, so the amount of activity... If we're looking at like female and male brains, I mean, they're totally lit up in different spots, you mm -hmm. know. Um, actually, I think he's even worked with some some athletes of yours. He works a lot of like with football players because he says, you know, like, you know, I'm almost like a football player for the life that I lead. I got to do everything else right. If you're going to go and live under this amount of stress, which is pretty abnormal, mm -hmm. it's like you're getting hit in the head an abnormal amount of times, then I got to do everything else right. So I got to be right. pretty diligent about my supplements. I got to really care about the food that I eat. My mom always says like, you guys are overthinking it. I've eaten Cheetos every single day. It's true for the rest of my life. And I'm like, yeah, but you're not like a, you know, you're not a superstar that has to go on stage and do two hour shows. You know, my heart really needs to be in good condition. I need to be in good condition. I can't, by the way, my mom has a crazy panic attack. So like, I, I can't have any of that. My mom <laughs> has had me slam, like had them slam the brakes on an airplane to take off and made me drive home from Canada to Tennessee. I drove from Tennessee to Canada nine times because of her anxiety. Oh, I've Jesus driven Christ. from Nashville to California <laughs> like four times because of her anxiety. So I don't Tell listen to my mom. Exactly. My grandma was on a popcorn diet where 
she took a trash bag to the movie theater and filled it up with popcorn. And she's like, don't I look good? I'm like, on the outside, it's fine. Oh. On the inside, I'm worried. Meanwhile, she's going to outlive all of us. So sometimes I worry about that. But I think I am kind of like an athlete in the way of like, if I'm going to be doing this kind of abnormal sure. type lifestyle, then... I have to do everything else right. So my spec scan looks pretty good, but I like looking at my brain and knowing, okay, so this isn't looking at me and going, there's just something wrong with me and I don't know why. I had a head injury when I was, you know, two years old. What happened? <sighs> it's bad. My dad had me, this is really bad, but he can't go to jail. I don't think it's long enough time away. He had me in a baby backpack and I was on a dirt bike with my dad. And he was riding and a tree had fallen and he ducked and I didn't and I hit my head on the tree. Oh Jesus it was bad. Christ. So that's what's wrong. Everyone's asked me that for well, years. Well that you know that's a common theme with wild people. Do you know that? Yes. Sam Kennison got hit by a car when he was like a little kid and, and his brother Bill said it completely changed his life. We have just he was different just like standards. Real com Same thing with Roseanne Barr. She got hit by a car when she was 15. Before that, she was like mild mannered, really good at math. After she got hit by a car, she had to spend nine months at a mental institution, couldn't count anymore. Yeah. And she became this wild lady who who everybody knows as Roseanne. Right. I mean, maybe, I, maybe I'm thankful for it. Maybe it like, I don't know, knocked me into this identity or I something. Think, I think think there's something to I'm not he kidding. knows that there's something to that dr. Amen we've talked about this a lot so when I get really overwhelmed I also have a tendency that if I know something stupid I just got to try it to know that it's stupid which is makes it stupid because I already knew about it sometimes I'm like is it better to know it's dumb and do it or to not know it's dumb and do but it don't you think part of that that's a head injury well maybe but also it's the fun alone of your breaks but you just know the way you developed as a human being being that famous that you know, 12 years old doing stadiums. But I do like, I like looking at my brain and going, okay, listen, like someone cut my brakes, right, on my brain. And I have to take all the things, omega, I, I've been, was vegan for a very long time. And I've had to introduce fish and omegas into my life because my brain wasn't functioning properly. Mm. Um, and Don't tell that to the vegans. They'll come for you. That's They're going to come for me, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I'm used to people coming for me and it's going to be that I calm out. You need salary. No, I, listen, if I, I give homes. I have 22 animals on my farm in Nashville. I've got 22 in my house in Calabasas. Like I'm doing what I need to do for the animals. Okay. 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 But when it comes to my brain, you're not vegan. <laughs> no, you can't be vegan and living this kind of and be in this quick. But sure you can. Some people can. I cannot because it was really giving. I was what having did a lot for of, your brain. I feel that I'm much Slowed you down. Now I'm so much sharper than I was. Mm. And I think that I was at one point pretty malnutrition. Like I remember going to, um, Glastonbury, and that was a show that I loved. I loved my performance, but I was running on empty. Mm. Like, I was on. Were you, I was on were you, empty. Can I ask you, were you doing a vegan diet, like meticulous? The strictest you've were you ever known. But were you doing intelligently? Like, were I did you all my supplements. The right way I and... do all my protein drinks. Mm -hmm. I've watched every bodybuilder's YouTube about how they still. You can't pay attention to those train. guys. Train. That's what I'm saying. All yeah. of a sudden, I'm like, those all guys I need is are... celery. And like, why are my thighs like fucking huge? Those like, vegan <laughs> bodybuilder guys, they're almost all on steroids. It's, 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 yeah, it's I'm fake. not on steroids. Well, they, I mean, um, um, and they're, you know, they're different bodies. Too. Some people, I have good friends that are vegan and they, they're fine on it. Mm -hmm. My friend John Joseph, he's been See, vegan for like 30 years. That's he's why fine I think Nate it. Diaz, I was stoked, was yes. a vegetarian. He's not, yeah, vegetarian. He's, uh, uh, no, he At one fish. point. Or so, a pescatarian. He, yeah, he that seems that eggs, what I like they to eat do. Fish. Yeah. That's I, where I'm at. There's a lot of people that function really well with that. But yeah. some people, fun it's everybody's different. You know, we all have different ancestors. And our exactly. ancestors come from different parts of the world. And, you know, I don't know if the blood type thing is accurate, but some people really believe that. So this is another thing that I like about seeing the brain is I try to eat from my brain type and not my blood type. Brain necessarily. Type. My brain type. So my brain type. I really need breaks on my brain because I did, I did not have that where I in my new song. It says I can't bite the devil on my tongue. That was like a really hard thing for me to learn how to do. Yeah. But instead of going, I'm just totally impulsive and the most reactive person ever. I look and go, well, but my dad also slammed my head into a tree when I was two. <sighs> so, you know, it's maybe a as a dad. That's hard to hear. That I know. scares the shit out of I've me. I've given him a award for worst dad ever. at one. <laughs> Every time I go. You know, if we're on Hollywood and there's the best dad award, I scratch out best and put worst. Um, but he was also the best because he would allow me to do a lot of other crazy things that were awesome. Well, it, you're fine. I yeah, mean, I'm fine. Look, My dad let injured. me steal chickens from the Malibu barn, that little red barn yeah. when you come down to Topanga. Mm -hmm. 
my dad, they were going to feed these chickens to the snakes, and they led us back there, and my dad was like, listen, I'm Billy Ray Cyrus. I'm going to totally distract them. You shove as many chickens into the back of the Corvette as you can while I'm signing autographs, and we're going to get the hell out of here. So I did. I went, me and my brother got all these damn chickens, and we shoved them in the back of his car. And he and was going to— Snakes went hungry, though. He was about to go work for David Lynch. He, well, he was going to audition for him for Mulholland Drive. And my dad brought mm. the chickens in the Corvette. And he said, if you're going to have chickens in the Corvette, like, you're playing the pool guy. You know, that's a pool guy <laughs> thing to do. So my dad got the job. But, so because he got the job, he had to stay in L.A. and we had to go back to Tennessee. So he told me and my mom to tell the people on the airplane that they were— exotic Himalayan cockatoos and we did and they let them on the plane and we had them in the purse and we we they lived in a bathtub and like on Hollywood and Highland in some <laughs> hotel for a long time and then we got home and the f- night we got there our dogs got in the chicken coop made them all so they mm. died anyway but that's the kind of dad my dad is he sets you up for failure and for disappointment but I like that about him because he made me tough well I mean it's hard to keep dogs out of chicken coops I had a dog that got in the chicken coop too <sighs> it I had, sucks I had a lot of chickens at one point in time and then after the last fire out here yeah. uh, my chicken coop my house stayed okay but my chicken coop burnt to the ground damn and then we had to put them in a smaller chicken coop and the coyotes got them that's the thing that's the thing you yeah. can't blame dad for nature that's the way no, that it is you, you can't. know dogs will eat chickens yeah they give them a chance so will snakes apparently fuck yeah they got yeah. it yeah so you your brain like when they do this scan mm-hmm. do they do they tell you what you should do to make it better like what do they do they look at it and go oh you're fucked up no <laughs> like, they, they tell what you they what they you can do to make it better you know he works kind of with uh, you know i guess a, a lot of um you know, kind of mostly athletes, people that kind of live abnormal lifestyle. And, and so injuries. 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 Yeah. He yeah. just posted a cool picture with Tyson and he just works with all different. He, I love seeing the other brains that I'm allowed to see also because it kind of is fun to. I would love like a match.com, but like where people just put their brain scans and be like, I oh, like that one. Work. That's lighting up the right where I need right. it. You know, you got something I don't have. That would be actually amazing if right? that's how it worked. Because you, you want like personalities are weird. Like people sometimes you go, well, I don't, they just work together. Exactly. And, and I maybe... think it, it has to do with that. You know, I'm not really looking now. I guess for as much as I'm looking for the this, I, I want the soul connection, but I'm more about the brain connection. I'm a very logical, I like to have kind of logic in my life because I used to be kind of owned by emotion in a way. I was very emotional. And that's what I meant by, I think we spun off of what I meant by tough. Mm-hmm. So I used to be very emotional. And um, that used, used to, to kind cry of, about things and now you get over things. And also more like... I would really kind of just like, I would just become such a recluse. I have that tendency. My dad, my dad said he's, everyone's just getting on social distancing. He's been doing it since 1992. Like my dad's been on social. I said, it as soon as we walked in here, you know, I, it so made that me. That was around achy, breaky heart time. Yes. Right. 92 yep. is. That was right when I was born. Yeah. And that is when it was all crazy. So that also explains, I mean, I think somewhat of my, uh, just who I am, my personality, how I, how I. Kind Did your dad move. talk to you about what the anxiety was like for him when he became famous? Well, my dad. Your dad was a my fucking. Dad, for people who don't know, in the ni- early nineties, your dad was a fucking superstar. But he had a very different lifestyle than I did. As my dad grew up in a house that didn't even have an indoor bathroom. My dad hadn't gone to the dentist until he was thirty years old. My dad had never gone to wow. a dentist. My dad grew up poor. My his my uncle still lives in their same house. He's wow. got an indoor bathroom now because my dad's a G and put that in. <laughs> but he still lives in the same house. And um yeah, so my dad grew up in like uh you probably have seen it. It's one of the poor areas in the country. My dad grew up in Appalachia and Kentucky. So sure. did my mom. So um I've been there a bunch and I've I've been able to see where my dad's from. So he had a different relationship to fame because he went from nothing to everything i went kind of from having you know everything if we look at really the way i grew up lived in a big house on a big farm the only thing that was sad about is we didn't have kind of neighbors or normal kids uh around because i lived on this big kind of isolated farm but went to school had this normal life but i mean if we really look at it i didn't know when i was a kid that i had everything but i had everything so i Mm. went from having it all to having more and that I don't know what's harder to kind of uh, to kind of humanize, I guess, about yourself because my life is 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 very unique, and so it's very hard for me to to sit with someone and relate to them. And I think that made me really scared because 
Um, my mom doesn't like to be alone. So I have that fear in my mind if I don't want to be alone. But I think what makes you lonely isn't the amount of people are around. But like, am I relating to people? Am I really right. connecting? Well, and you must have a hard time connecting to people. I because do. they don't have the same life experience as you. Your reality. It's like you're in a, you're in a fishbowl. You're right. in a different reality. And you're hanging out next to people that aren't in the fishbowl. Here's the difference of the fishbowl. So we usually put the fish in the fishbowl and I, you know, I you were born I, in the fishbowl. Right. We do it. And I was born into it. But then again, I put myself into it. So if you get a beta, well, you're the one that does it. You did it when you were a little kid and you didn't know what you were doing. But my though. parents didn't really want me to. So my parents, my dad wouldn't even really go with us to the auditions. He was actually kind of mad at my mom about it. That was kind of a thing. And then my mom's like, I'm going to do this. So, you know, she stays in this small town. She's going to be like everybody else that just ends up on drugs. So she took me to L.A. Mom, <laughs> like, hello. She didn't even smoke weed yet. Well, this oh, that's is that's, that's not the A.B. that I've ever heard of. Like, let's avoid drugs in Nashville. So let's get more and better, a lot better drugs in L.A. So, but what, what's we, we're going way off track. What what bothers you about being more resilient? Because that's what it sounds like. It does. When you say more tough, I, you're talking about the difference between someone who reacts overly emotionally mm -hmm. something you would fall to the ground and curl up in a ball and cry about things and now you can get over them that to me is a the sign of perspective okay so here's where it is and i don't even want to have a conversation about like really you know sexism or men versus women because mm -hmm. like i love dudes you know and i i actually relate to dudes a lot more um but i think men in my life have told me that i'm cold or i'm a cold fucking bitch because i leave when things are done i was actually gonna say well maybe you know, you've been dating bitches i'm really into a lot of <laughs> freaky things but i don't fuck dead guys and when it's over it's over and you're dead to me and we move on wow. you know so that's, that's how heavy. i feel about it that's heavy and uh, i'll do a lot of things but I don't do that and so I um, think that that's where I've gotten the idea which actually I'm glad you just said that to me because I, I get this kind of beaten into the brain from all different angles my mom is like you know everyone else is proud of me for being like you said resilient and yeah. I have a lot of guilt I'm a very guilty person but that sounds like you're talking to guys who want you to feel guilty because yeah. you don't feel emotional about it ending and this is the people first need time to learn how to just let shit go if they like you or if they love you they love you, you they have to you, well, um, they, but if they, they don't love have you, to they that's a hard thing should want you to be happy just let it pass and then be friends Okay, so if they can't do that, that's on them. That's not on that's you why I'm because looking you're for resilient. An older man, because these like guys that are, you know, I definitely should be with someone. I think that you got to find Nick Nolte. This is what I'm thinking. <laughs> this is what I'm. Th <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. I don't need a man or a woman that's gonna take care of me. I can take care of me because I've got money. I've got all the things that I need to take care of myself. I need them to be able to take care of them. Yeah. Because somehow I keep getting into. The two well, you need someone with autonomy. Yes. That's what you need. You need someone who, they don't need your constant approval and affection and, and attention. And now that we're using and, this word need, yeah. I, just for the record, I guess I really don't need you to don't be need in a relationship anything. at all. So no. that's good we got to this point. See, this yeah. is therapy. Yeah, you don't need it. but No, it's, it does sound nice. People can poison you with their ideas of what you should be. And if you don't meet up to their expectations, and oftentimes their expe expectations of you are just to reaffirm themselves. Mm -hmm. They want you to love them. They want you to tell them how awesome they are. And if you don't feel that way, mm -hmm. you're cold. Yeah. There's something wrong with you. Right. Because they don't have autonomy. They can't right. exist independently. Right. That's the problem. Right. The problem is there's a lot of bitches out there. I like it. You said it, not That's me. What That's it how is. I feel. And honestly, we're talking at a very, uh, this is a super like kind of pivotal moment for me right now. I haven't been single in like, I guess really from 2015. I mean, there's been little months, so maybe about five years. Like I've had, you know, a few months here and there where I've been single, but not for a long period of time. And, you know, something I'm really excited about is uh, this VMA performance that's coming up. And I love that it's the first time that I'm going to be on that stage as a single, badass, grown, evolved, secure um, woman that's done a lot of work. Like I've done, I've done the work, and that's the thing. Is some people say, um, you know, like how did you, how did you get here? You know, you turned out pretty good. And it's like, dude, I've I worked really hard at it. But just seriously, get it in your head. Anytime someone gives you a hard time about being strong, you're not a bad person. 
just because you're strong, just because you don't cry as easy as you used to, mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I'm you, it's that. perspective. That's all it is. You're not a bad person. You look at all, all these fucking animals you have. Yeah. How could you be a bad person if you love animals that Dude, much? Dude, I put this stuff called monkey butt on my dog's what ass is monkey every butt? day. This baby powder for dog butts. Because I, <laughs> I got uh, this guy, one hey, of my, my, my friend who said, oh my God, this is a whole other story. My friend who's sitting out there right now tried to immediately, you know, make me happy because I just went through a breakup and showed me a hot guy on Instagram. And I started scrolling and I see him putting this powder on his dog's ass. I'm like, I don't want him, but I want that stuff for the dog's ass. That looks great. So I ordered it right away. Monkey butt. So I have a dog. Her, uh, She can't see. She can't hear. She can barely walk. She was dropped at a fire station. She was overbred. She's a bulldog, you know, and they oh, bred them, breed them crazy. Yeah. And she uh, can barely get off the floor. She's so overweight. And her name is Kate Moss. And what I love about it <laughs> is I tell everybody when I'm coming to set, you know, I'm going to bring Kate Moss, make sure she's good. She's COVID tested. We're all good. And then all the men on set's face are the best because it's like, I thought Miley Cyrus was bringing Kate Moss is going to be the best day of my life. And then she comes in with her big ass, literally, that I have baby powder. She has diapers because I, I put wow. diapers on her from when she comes to set because her butt is like atrocious. Do you just need to get her on a diet? I have her on a diet. Honestly, I'll show you some pictures when we're done with this because she had this thing called a cherry eye and everyone, she had them in both eyes. So they were trying to get me to like either remove her eye or do all this surgery, oh, whatever. Jesus. I'm like, let me do this the old fashioned way. So every day I get up, I clean her eyes. See, I'm not a bad person. I clean her eyes. I put four drops in two times a day, give her three tablets. She's lost probably 10 pounds already and the cherries are completely out of her eyes. She is healed. And what I love about her, and I'll show you these videos, is uh, she does, she can sing. That's what really mm. locked her in. So I've never known this to be a, to, for a dog to do this. When I do scales and I warm up for my shows, she howls and sings with me, and she's oh, got perfect pitch. That's cool. So I hadn't even adopted her yet. I was fostering her, and I was going to take her to set, hoping you know somebody's kids wanted a dog and they would want her. And the first thing that someone said is a face only a mother can love, and I was like, that's not true. I love her, um, and so I love her because she started singing to me, and then I, I adopted her. Right then, she's so ugly that they waived the adoption fee they said I, that's not a lie they literally she was free and i i now have to remind myself they say the best things in life are free and when i look at that's her and hilarious. her big ass i know it's true she's so ugly she's free <laughs> i had a friend who had wolves he had wolf dogs and you could you could like sing in his house and the wolves would start howling you go yeah my dog- and they would Aah! See, my my dogs do that with the ambulance here. Oh, yeah. If you're, Coyotes right, do that. Yes. Yeah. All, so they start going, then my dogs start mm-hmm. going. So all the dogs sing, but they ne- none of them do it to scale like Kate Moss. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. Oh, yeah. She's good. So, yeah. Don't let anybody tell you that there's something wrong with being resilient. Yeah. yeah. That, but I'm people will that. do that. Men will do that. I see a lot of men do that with women. They want women to feel bad. They want them to feel bad for, for not being emotional And I wrecks. used to get small. That's what I'm telling yeah, you. See, that's what I, it, it used to be really easy to kind of put me back in the, you know, kind of jack in the box kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. you could get me to come out and just for a little while. But it's, it's, it's become suspiciously convenient timing. It always seems that I get told that I'm a cold bitch before I'm right about to. Right when you're done. <laughs> right, when I, right when I'm ready to put out fucking music. Yeah. It happens every uh, time. Oh, because you're focused on other things focused other than on the other man. things, exactly. Yeah. Again, yeah. you're dating bitches. And then it's like, you know, and then I, it's just, it's all, it's a whole thing. It's Do all. You, you have so much energy, like the way you talk and all the sentences run on into the next. <laughs> do you exercise? Yes, I exercise. What do you do? I love Pilates, and uh, it's not super, I guess, Cardio. I think you need to do something. I need to aggro. run a little bit more. You need I, to do something. I got aggro. a bag being put in my house right now, so I'm gonna next time I'm here, I'll show you. I'll be okay, able to beat the shit out of it. Protect your hands. Like oh if yeah, you, these if nails do, come off. I just have them okay. taped on. This okay. is Dolly style. Everything about me is taped on, honey. Uh, it's an easy at night. You just go, and I like, ah. yeah. But it's all just tape. People that have that illusion. play guitar and and do oh, yeah. musical instruments and they hurt their hands. I actually had things. a uh, I had a guy told me that I had grubby little kid hands. And I liked that about it because I did have dirt and that was because this was at a time where I was doing drugs and I wanted to know where the hell the gophers go. So there was a gopher <laughs> hole in my backyard and I'm like, where do they keep going? And I see them pop up and they go away and I'm like, so you're if you can dig out? to China, you can dig and fucking find a gopher. So here I go. You can't really dig to China. And I know that much and you can't yeah. find the gophers either. You can. They, yeah, they, my gardener could, knows how to get them. I could not find the gophers and I looked for a very long time. I even tried to get them out with pizza. 
I brought mm. pizza down into the hole, hoping that, you know, everybody loves pizza. Apparently not gophers. You rarely see gophers, but you see their holes all the That's time. That's what I'm telling you. That's where I was <laughs> trying to go. That's it. You know, when someone tells you that they've been enlightened, they saw yeah. Jesus and, you know, whatever. I wanted to see. I don't even want to see Jesus. I just want to see a damn gopher. So I went into the hole and... I never saw a gopher. I so want to see a wolverine. I'll die disappointed. If I was one animal I could see in, in the wild, I'd like to see a wolverine. See, you're like, that's that's next level. I just want a freaking regular, degular gopher in the backyard I've of Studio City. I've seen gophers. City. You rarely see them, but I've I know. seen them. But I, I think Wolverines that, are dope. Super yeah, cool. Well, I just think seeing one of them fuckers, and that's rare. It's rare yeah. to see one of those things in the wild. Yeah. My dad, uh, my dad wanted to see a bear. For 30 years, he had this dream. I, this is so, I have to tell him, I don't know if he's lying or if he's, what the hell's going on. But we're on this plane and he's so excited. He's like, I'm going to see. He, My dad's a little kind of intuitive that way. And he's like, I'm going to finally do it. I've been looking for 30 years. And when you look hard enough and, and you're diligent about what you want, you know, I believe that you get it through diligence. And I've been looking for bears for 30 years, whatever. <laughs> and so he brought catnip to he, so he could get the bear to come out. I'm like, what the, what's the deal? So, of course, my dad ends up going on some hike. And he sees a bear and he leaves the catnip for it as a treat. He ends up leaving. And now I was so scared. You know, catnip gets the cat's hype. Right. Like it's like crack. Yeah. For, I'm like, yeah, please don't wild. give crack to the bear. I don't think I was, it works that way. I was just, I hope to God that, I don't know, if, how would you know? Has anyone ever given catnip to a bear? I'm sure someone's That's done it. That's very niche. I'm but pretty sure if one person's done it, his name doesn't is Billy work Ray on dogs. So why would it work on bears? I don't know. Dogs aren't bears. I don't know. They I, seem to be like more closer dog -like to dogs like than cat like. Well, no bears ended up going ham and doing anything crazy. Where'd your dad see a bear? He was somewhere on the East Coast doing a show. There's plenty of places to see bears. You don't have to wait 30 years. My dad Just probably right was spot. lazy as hell and probably said, I looked everywhere, probably <laughs> opened his front fucking door, a bear went and sat in there and went back inside. Well, that's what people think when, they, when they're worried. There's Nelson. no bears left. Go outside. Look. Well, Just go to the right place. I've seen bears. There's I went, plenty of bears. I, I spent a, a little bit of time in Vancouver, BC with my brother. Mm. This is actually one of the crazier things I've ever done. People think I'm so crazy, but this is the craziest thing. But it's not even that nuts. I... Uh, I was following like Nat Geo on Instagram, and I love the pictures of the spirit bears. I love those like beautiful bears up in BC, and uh, I kind of started reading about the wolf coal up there, and I got really kind of invested in these animals. And I sent a DM and said, "Is there any way that some point I could go with maybe some of your researchers, and I could see some of these bears or wolves for myself? Because I think I'd be even more inspired to kind of like fight for them if I could actually see them and know that they're really real. Because I've only ever seen them from a picture." And they responded and said, "Sure." You can come up and hang with the spirit bears. This is kind of like, I don't know if it's catfishing or I don't know what was really going on, but someone's telling me, sure. So me and my brother load up. We I didn't really want to get my parents involved. So we got a coach flight and had to go through San Francisco. Then we got this shitty little hotel room because we were just trying to, how, I didn't know how to do it. I've, everyone's always done my travel for me, managers and all these things. So I was just booking it. So we ended up taking like two little planes, three boats, and we ended up getting to, um, with this dude, Ian, who shoots and, uh, for Nat Geo and shoots up in BC and it was just amazing and, and when I got to see all the spirit bears um, I got to go into like where they do all their research on their boat so they'll leave these like uh, kind of like trap combs where they it just brushes the bears hair when it when it walks by okay. so they can yeah. understand kind of more about it and DNA test. yeah sort of yeah. looking about like all this information again this is one of the kind of weirder things that I've done that I I, I didn't really know who was going to be waiting on that boat? I mean, I know we tell girls not to go out into the middle of a boat. Getting... How old were you when you were doing this? This was uh, two weeks after the VMAs in 2015. So you're already super famous, and you're. I was super famous. Going out there to find bears with my brother. There, there I am. Yeah, there I am. <laughs> yeah. And that's Do you my, find that if you're brother. not glammed up, like <laughs> there you, I am. that you can kind of sneak around? Well, this is kind of funny because they, I think it's happening in a second. They gave me a caterpillar that if you lick its belly, your tongue goes numb. Oh, great. And I pretended that I was, it might happen somewhere in here. Oh, yeah, save the BC wolves. But if like you don't wear makeup and shit, can you sneak around? Um. Yeah, I sneak around pretty good. It's the voice. It's right. not the makeup. Now, I just have to shut right? up. Yeah, it's right. the voice. Can you fuck happen. with your voice and make it high? Can you pretend? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Uh, I have a phone voice, I think. I, I Apparently, you know, I directed this last video, and apparently when I read my presentations, I have, like, a different voice, you know, like when uh -huh. you answer the phone. But I think it sounds the same. My yeah. my phone voice, I think, is like, I think it just sounds the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what gets you. That's what gets me yeah, every people time. People know. Yeah, they're like, wait, but the, listen to her But talk. the voice. I'm telling you it's her. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you. That's fucking 
That's whispers. the worst when you hear those whispers. Yeah, those yeah. are weird whispers, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Your life of growing up famous is that that doesn't end well for most people. You're remarkably together mm -hmm. for someone who grew up famous. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a it's a weird way. It's a weird alchemy mm -hmm. to to put together a human being where. And your developmental stages, preteen, in fact, mm -hmm. you're hugely famous. Yeah. What do What do you think that did for you? What did it do for do you, me? Do you Do you think that's a good thing, or do you think it's it's a manageable thing? I would say it isn't recommended because, like I kind of said in the beginning of this, it's it's like jumping in the deep end of the pool and not knowing if you can swim or not, and it can go one way or the other. Luckily, I swam. But it almost always goes the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, I know. Almost always. And that I don't think comes very recommended, and I I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I well, don't know. I don't know what it is, but I feel uh, I feel like. I've kind of been given this like special, I don't know, kind of special understanding of I don't even know where it comes from because I'm really not religious and and I, I maybe it comes from like education of getting a good understanding of you know I've got kind of a good idea of like what fame does on kind of like if, if we're looking at it from a level of were you thinking about this when you were young? I wasn't thinking about this when I was young, but I started thinking about it uh, at the time where I think it kind of mattered that I could go one way or the other. And that was probably when I was 17 and I bought Dr. Amon's book about understanding, like, kind of, I, I get it, why I can't get high enough, like, on drugs and mm -hmm. why I end up tr doing more drugs than anybody else. I wrote a song where one of the lines says, I'll go toe to toe like I'm Ali. Like, I'll just, I'll do more. That could be the biggest guy in the room and I'll say, I'll be able to do more drugs than you. But it's because my level of what high is, is. I felt it from, I mean, when you're having 15,000 people scream your name and sing along to your songs, it's like, you know how you're saying your float tank is getting high without drugs? It's like yeah. that, but times a billion. No, I'm sure. Uh, so it's really hard to, to come down off that. And uh, I never luckily had a problem with like taking downers to bring myself down, but there was a lot of people uh, around me that was like, you know, just take half of these and you'll be fine. Mm. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm lucky I didn't start messing with downers. I think it also might have to do with your head injury. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that. There's there's a real big connection between people with traumatic brain injury and the the need for either alcohol or cocaine or, or something to perturb your uh, your natural state of consciousness. And a lot of my brain is really really on. Uh, it's got like overactivity. But yeah. then again, if you kind of look at the part that frontal lobe that kind of tells you you know yes or no or stops you from making a bad choice mine gets a little sleepy sometimes when i'm not doing especially when it comes to the diet when my diet isn't you know it's it's it's, it's annoying because i do like to when i'm country so i like to eat bad food i i had never my mom used to get mad if i would tell her i don't want butter like my mom is Butter's like great for yeah, you yeah now i'm fine and but i just remember growing up i my mom you know, we, we ate frozen waffles and all that. We don't know anything about nutrition. I, right. I grew up on that country diet. And so I learned a lot. I honestly, I mark a lot of um, my, I guess, kind of like my grounding and the weight that I have to my diet, to my supplementing, to my, my maintenance, to the diligence, to the sport that being an entertainer is. It is a sport. Yeah, yeah. it Do, is. Are you the boss? Yes, I'm the boss. You're the boss. I'm the boss. Do you have a mentor? Do you have someone that you can consult with when shit is weird? I send faxes back and forth to Dolly Parton because that's how she communicates. Oh, shit. That's how we communicate. Well, listen, communicate. That, if you need a mentor, that's the mentor. Exactly. And there's a woman who's done it. And I kind of, I, I try to kind of, you know, my life moves so fast. Um, I try to kind of send her a little kind of rundown of what's going on every By other fax? month. You guys fax She each faxes other? me, then I send an email and they fax to her. <laughs> Um, they email the facts to me. Yeah, it is. She, uh, yeah, she she records everything on the cassette and all that. But she so records she, it on a cassette. And so she's she. I have actually um, a recording of her saying it. It's somewhere. It's on the beginning of Rainbow Land or at the end of it. But she says, "Oh, I listened to that." Yeah, she goes, "All yeah. right, I'm gonna put this on my cassette. Then I'm yeah. gonna run it down onto a CD. Oh, I'm so high tech." <laughs> yeah, yeah. We played Jolene, your your cover of Jolene on this podcast once. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. No, when uh, a lot of kids kind of think that's my song now. That's what I like doing about covers. Oh, that's fine, I, right? I think you were talking about uh, that Cornell tribute at one point, mm -hmm. also, and yeah. that's what I love. My fans, you know, they 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 wouldn't really know unless I music. introduced it right. to them, and that's something that I really love. And that happened recently with Midnight Sky and Stevie Nicks. Uh, there's a sample of Edge of Seventeen, which I got. 
I got blessed by her to be able to allow me to do it. I had another melody, uh, a B melody. It's definitely below a B because it's not Edge of 17, which is my top five favorite song ever. And she said, you can borrow from me anytime, which like. That's awesome. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to be pretty badass to be able to be in contact and and to collaborate with all these amazing artists. And I went on the road with Joan Jett for a little while, too. And she was on, on tour with The Who. Uh, I went and hung out with her for a little while. For a little while, that's and, amazing. You know, even if I'd show up there and I'd maybe been partying too much, and she would yell at her manager Kenny, who's you know been her manager and in her band from the beginning. Kenny, we got to get her like some Mexican food or something. Look at her, like she's she's <laughs> like you're, she's gonna break in half. And you know, all of a sudden, all this food starts showing up to my room. And you know, I think she's probably seen you know not just in her own band, but yeah. you know. Um, She's I think, seen everything. I think she's seen everything. She's and seen I think everything. she's seen it go the wrong way. You know how yeah. we're talking about whether you swim or drown. I think yeah. she's seen a lot more people drown, and so she always tries to feed me. But that's where it's got to be really hard if you're a woman like her who's been there, done that, and then you see some young girl coming up, and you're like, damn, this this lady right now is in the waves. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and you've been in the waves mm-hmm. many times where yep. that ship is rocking back and forth, and you don't know which way it's going to go. Yeah. When you're a 17-year-old kid, and you're doing a lot of mushrooms and smoking a lot of pot, and, mm-hmm. and, and also you're super fucking famous. Famous and really people can't tell you shit yeah which is part of the problem I know that's why my mom's the best I, I didn't understand she was the best at the time she'd still take yeah. my cell phone I'm like how can you take it I'm paying for it and she's like <laughs> I gave you life shut up <laughs> um, you know and but yeah this, my mom still took my cell phone until I was almost 20 you have like an almost manic way of talking yeah. Your your way of talking is almost like a fountain, like a crazy fountain. Like <laughs> words just keep coming and, and ideas just keep coming. I know. Like how do you how do you shut that off? Uh I am into a lot of these I, I love the idea of these hypnosis apps. I have a lot of those Which on my ones phone. Which ones do you use? I like uh I like Amen Clinics, so I'm all about my boy Dr. Okay. Amen. Um I listen to Headspace a lot, mm, and I like Calm. I use great. that a lot the also. Calm's great. Yes. I, I actually, my favorite thing about Headspace is I love the um, the sleep skate, and my favorite one is the Cat Marina, because uh, okay. I do love boats, and I do love cats, so that's a dream for me <laughs> after a long day. Does and that I, work on you? Yeah, Does it calm you down? When my house burned down, I... Literally, I'm not joking. The Cat Marina got me through. I was stranded mm. in South Africa, and every night it'd be like, hello, and good evening. You're at the Cat Marina. <laughs> Lucky for you, you love cats. What do you love more? Boats. Yeah. You know, and it's like, hell yeah, I'm at the Cat Marina. My house is on the ground in a million pieces, and I'll never see anything that I loved inside of again, but I'm at the fucking Cat Marina. I'm not a doctor, but if I was, I would, tell, I would prescribe to you some ri- ridiculous, rigorous exercise. I think you are... You're like a little Ferrari, and you need to get out there on the fucking racetrack. Well, let's go. And I really think that. Like, let's go. I see all this fucking energy you have. I'm like that. That lady's like an overflowing battery. This is why I like. This is why I like to work hard, and maybe yes, that's. Maybe, I'm sure. Yeah, I love yeah, to work. You're a thoroughbred. I do. And when and I don't you, work, that's when I get in trouble. But you also got to think about there's genetics involved. You know, your father was a musician, and you know, just and then all your life. Being in the public eye like that and performing and working and then just the amount of uh, effort that you put in when you were a kid touring all the time. I mean, you're fucking geared for that shit, you know, and I just feel like people like that, your body can betray you sometimes. I know that. If you don't... I have a lot of physical pain, to be yeah. honest with you. Um and that's something I'm working on and trying to figure out too. And that had a lot. You got physical pain. Like physical pain. Physical my pain? hips like really, really hurt me, and Your hips. my hips drive me crazy. Like From what? if I fly, I think I don't know. Maybe it's just the. Do you stretch? I do stretch. Yeah. I'm actually overly flexible. I'm like kind of double jointed everywhere, mm. um, and so I have a lot of like shoulder. Like my shoulder will just slip out. What? All the time. Like it kind of just does weird things and my arms twist in weird directions. Are you physically strong? Physically strong? I think yeah. I'm pretty strong. I've been stronger. I've been stronger. Maybe it's like a muscle thing. Maybe you need to exercise. Um, like but I, weight lift. I I really, really loved lifting and um doing all my weight training, my resistance, and then the kind of the veganism. I was kind of trying to I think I'm really kind of building myself back up to realize what works. So I'm actually right now in a very experimental period. It's actually fun to talk about with you because I know that you kind of have probably some good suggestions on that. But I'm experimenting a lot with like my diet and my body and my routine and my exercise right now. Um, Because I mean, kind of like, you know, Leaving veganism and, and is really terrifying. Like you said, the public kind of will destroy you for that. And How long were you vegan? 
uh, since tw- I was vegan from 2013 till 2019. So in 2019, what was the first thing that you ate? Uh, my my ex wasn't. husband cooked me cooked me some fish on the grill. Um, and did you, I cried like for a you long cried time. For the fish? I cried for the fish, and I those hope. little fucks. They don't I, even take care of their kids. Listen, I have some videos on my <laughs> phone of my fish at home. I have a blowfish that runs to the side of the tank every time I come home, so it really hurts me to eat because it to thinks eat you're going to feed it. And I do every time. Yeah, that's it. That's I all know. it is. If it, if it, you know what? I haven't really had. You get shot in the head. That fish doesn't give a fuck. Well, that's what Just that's what my around. ex said about the dogs. And I'm like, I can't do this. The dogs. And he's like, watch this. Starts feeding them the fish. They're like, they're happy. You know, they'll eat it. But um, so that's what I had. And it was because of a hip pain. I had uh, actually going to, we were flying to, I think, Poland or something on a tour that I was on. And I started sobbing, crying on the plane because I couldn't sit any longer because my hips were hurting so bad. So this was pre And laying on the floor. Pre-quitting gluten? Now I'm back on gluten. So that was a, the, I did a trial period of 18 of, of like kind of removing things because I think when you try all these different diets, like, okay, now I'm going to try keto. Now I'm going to try vegan. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to try this. You're doing it at such a kind of – it's really hard to know Drastic. what's affecting you. Right. Um, so I tried to go slowly like, okay, it, it takes a – freaking long time but going through and going i'm gonna eliminate this now right. and then i'm gonna put it back yeah. and see how i feel my body when i am supplementing especially with the omegas like the omegas have really changed my life for me i think again you know you kind of you kind of refer to me as something like a car and i think that we are kind of like a car and i was like so dry from having none of these healthy fats in my diet mm-hmm. i did what i could with like as many freaking avocados a day as i it's could have things but it's hard to get the fat yeah. it's not as bioavailable and your like brain is you know like your that. brain really needs those fats and you know it was really really hard for me fish oil is the way to go yep i know people don't like it and they don't like the idea behind it if but god damn it it's so good for your brain yeah i love uh i do kind of like the fish egg vital choice mm-hmm. Also, because mm, I, I love vitamins. fish eggs, the way to go. That's what I do. Yeah, I mean, that's it's really the best helped way my hips so, so yeah. much. Now, well, it's an inflammation I, issue, then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think in general, my brain, like you're saying, it's kind of on fire. It is inflamed. Yeah. I think in general, I'm inflamed. So I'm looking for in my life, not just in kind of like dating or relationships, but in general, the people I like to have around. I like to have those kind of water signs. I like someone that can kind of, or earth signs, but I love water signs because I love being. And in general, like, I love people that are kind of, like, fluid and that can kind of put some of that on my flame because it's, it's, it gets overwhelming sometimes, the amount of heat and, like, energy that I generate. Well, I actually was reading something about ducks that's interesting, the way that ducks handle their energy. Ducks? Yes. How do they handle their energy? So ducks, you know, I guess their form of exercise. So I, apparently... I was reading this in a book last night. I don't know if it's... I guess it goes with my reala- re- realistic children's stories. But I was reading about ducks, how they like kind of ferociously uh, flap their wings and then they kind of swim off in peace and you'll kind of... You'll see these weird kind of uh, patterns that they do and especially if two ducks are together. So you throw a piece of bread in the water, one of the ducks get it, they get a little fight going on. Then they both separate ways. They go to their own spot and start flapping their wings all crazy to get out some of that energy. Mm. And then they just swim away in peace. And I'm like, I guess that's kind of what you're saying that I need. I need to be more duck-like. I need to, whether it's the (laughs) beginning of the day or the end of the day, I need something to go and, like, flap my wings and get out that extra energy because I think that's part of the physical pain. Like, when when I went to go check in on the pain before, and I've been to a lot of people here, and no one seemed to help me with the physical pain. It actually gets really, really bad. Like, especially if I fly, I usually have to lay on the ground. Because my back hurts me so bad and my hips hurt me so bad. That's crazy. I know, and I'm for too you young to be for that. this young. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah, there's no. no real injuries you could point to that's, that that caused no this. So I overdid a Ashtanga yoga for a couple years because I mm. am extremist. Right. And some there's a little controversy between Ashtanga yoga and the kind of like hip injuries. Yeah, hip injuries. Did you get an MRI? Back. Have you ever um, got I've done everything at? and everything looks good. You know, everyone mm-hmm. says we have no idea. You know, kind of what's going on, but. They're not really taking into consideration my lifestyle, mm-hmm. which that has to do something. You know, it I have to, to put something. it somewhere. This yeah. amount of energy, I don't always get it out. You're right. I need to freaking run more. You know what? The running helped me a lot when the house burned down, too. In South Africa, I was running every day. Yeah. I would think that someone like you, you need something rigorous. If I don't work out, I'm not a great person. Yeah, that's like. what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I can guarantee you. Oh, yeah. I know yeah. when we don't do calls or work meetings before I work out. That's the, we know this. Okay. We've learned from the past. That do you have a trainer? Very important. Yeah, I do. Is yeah. it a good trainer? I have like a bad ass trainer, but I need to, 
I think in times where my trainer is kind of like family, like for me now, and maybe getting a little too soft, uh, a little too comfortable, a little too soft in yeah. the way that when I'm going through, like you know, this week I went through like another public breakup. I had the VMAs. The song was coming out at the same time, and when I got into the gym, like I would sometimes just start crying because mm. I love them like family. So when you walk in, I would just start crying because you know that you could be comfortable around just comfortable. Him. And then I think that it's hard to go. Okay, yeah. now I'm gonna beat your ass because I think he thinks life mm. is beating my ass. But maybe I need just. You Maybe need to it's separate tough those love. things. Exactly. Yeah, there's a job to be done. Yeah. All yeah. that emotion's great, and it's wonderful that he loves you, and that yeah. you guys are friends. And I think it's a little like bit that. my 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 bad for yeah. like wondering how hard I want to be pushed. Well, it's also you're the boss. That's the problem. Exactly. When you're the boss and you're Miley Cyrus, you can't say, "Listen, bitch, it's time to go to work." Yeah. You know. He'll he'll do it to me sometimes, which sometimes. I, which I like. Yeah. But you can't do it too much because then you're like, no, 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 I'm the fucking boss, and then you got. Well, then I think I get. Relationship. Then I think I I want to kind of. I don't know what it is. It's not give up, but then I think sometimes I wonder how much, and I really don't even like saying this because I kind of have guilt for my life. Like, I don't mean it's too much. Like, I can't take anything else. Like, I know that I don't have the hardest life. I know how lucky I am. Yeah, but I know that. Don't, you don't need to compare because just what, what you do is very difficult. Don't mm -hmm. make any mistake about that. I have a hard time with that. I Listen, feel very guilty. Th the nonsense. Throw someone else into your existence. Like, first of all, A, you didn't choose it, okay? You were a mm -hmm. little kid and you became famous. B, being in the public eye and just dealing with the things we we're talking about, about people writing stories that are fake about you, mm -hmm. all that stuff comes at a price. Mm -hmm. And if you read it, it comes at a heavier price. Mm -hmm. But even just knowing it exists, it, get, it gets into your head. You have to be very strong to be able to ward that off. And the idea that you don't and that it's easy mm -hmm. and that a regular life is easier, Horse shit. Mm -hmm. Regular life is just a regular life. It's not easier or harder, but what you do is fucking hard. Okay. It's very hard. You're very famous. Being very famous is weird. And yeah. being very famous your whole life is even weirder. So a normal person develops, right? You go through life and you meet friends and you have to show that you're a good person to get people to like you. You have to show, you know, some sort of uh, some excellence at something for people to praise you. You're getting fucking praised from the time you're a baby, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. It's a weird way to develop. Yes, I and agree. And so for you to reach adulthood and try to be conscious and try to be sentient and try to like to, to just st stay balanced, it's you're dealing with a situation that 99.999% of the population has no fucking idea what you're handling. Yeah. The only people that are going to understand it are people that also grew up famous. Yeah, which I have a hard time with because I haven't made that exactly my peer group, and now I kind of am. Like, I think I've been really searching for some sort of normalcy in my life. and For sure. And so I think I haven't surrounded myself with the top of of kind of people that are also at this at this level um because i feel i have a lot of guilt like i feel like of i would course. be i feel like that would make me shallow or something for only surrounding myself for like rich and famous people right and that but people do that sick. because they're the only ones that can relate to you and that's what Sometimes i'm working on you feel like people that are regular folks they treat you weird or they 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 like you more than they should or that they you know, they praise you more than they should because you're an alien. Yeah. You're this, yeah. like, oh, she's, fair. she's fucking Miley Cyrus. Yeah. You're not like a regular person that walks into a room, and you'll never be a regular person. And I think so rather than that. trying to prove, like, excellence in any way when I walk in a room, I try to prove really hard that I'm That you're normal. normal. Yeah. You and then be that's normal. exhausting. Yeah. But I don't want to be normal, which is funny, So because it's kind of like, you make a goal, you know, I do this with Eamon about making a goal and then going towards what I want. And it's like, I don't want to be normal. Yeah. But I, I constantly struggle with, am I a fucking rich asshole? Well, this is the beautiful thing. The beautiful thing is that you're thinking. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about all this. You're balancing it out. But this is not a path that very many people have gone through successfully. Yeah. And so that's it's why you have to be hard. careful because you're here right now. You're okay. Yeah. Like right now, Miley, Miley Cyrus in 2020, you're great. Mm -hmm. You're good. I mean, you've gone through divorce. You've gone through this. You've gone through that. But you're right here right now. You're yeah. okay. Yeah. The path forward is treacherous. Yeah. It is going to be because you didn't develop like a normal person. 
every fucking child star. I mean, like maybe like Jodie Foster. Like how many mm. how many of them made it through? Mm. And see, and I don't know her. Maybe that lady's crazy. <laughs> She's an amazing actress, <laughs> yeah. right? There's a few that made it through. There's not many. Yeah. And it's not a good path. Yeah. It's not a path that I would ever recommend to somebody. And once you've gone through it, there's no way to go back and do it all over again, right? But I say with confidence that I feel like I could be the one because I, I feel like. I don't expect it to be easy, and I don't even want it to be. Actually, I had a guy trying to be shitting me one time, said, you want a guy that'll just do whatever you want? I said, that's where you're wrong. I want like all the challenging things. If it's something that's easy, I don't fucking want it. I never have. That's why I didn't keep living my life in Nashville, where we were the biggest fish in the small pond, and all that kind of yeah. thing. You know, I needed more. And the reason why I say that with confidence is because I'm really willing to do the work, and I'm also, I'm willing to look at myself from a human level and also look at like what my body needs to thrive. And I know that it can't be cocaine for me and I know <laughs> that it can't be alcohol yeah. and I know that unfortunately I love fucking fish, but at this point I got to eat it to be able to have my brain to work as quickly as you and I are going right now or what I have to do later today and going to the studio tonight. And I, I understand myself from a human. There's nothing about me that thinks I am superhuman. And I think that... I think I would I would take that as something that that makes me unique because I don't think that I'm really I know that there's something special about me in my life but I don't feel that on this level of of being a human that I'm different and so I know what it takes to keep this motor going and 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 I also know when to take time. Well, off. all those things you said are perfect. As long as you have doubt, as long as you want to do better, as long as you're recognizing who you are is not exactly who you want to be. Yeah. You want to be better. You want to figure it all out. You want to work it all through. And you have this weird guilt from growing up in this weird it's way. It's bad. It has to be. Yeah. You're a fucking superstar when you're a little kid. The guilt's crazy. There's no way around it. And if you hang out with normal people, they're going to stick that in your face. And a, lot, soon, a lot of people hold my guilt. Of they course. know it's a weakness, so they use it with me a lot. you got to find people that don't do that. Yeah, that's, that's why my, my crew is pretty small. Beautiful. Well, yeah. they're all nice people. They are. And they've all been my in my life for over 10 years. And that is possible. People ask people that are famous, like, is it possible that you could find people that d don't get weird around you? Yeah, you could find them, but they have to be strong strong people exactly you have to have people that have their own personal sovereignty exactly. people that can hold their own space they don't need you they just love you yeah and oh, that man, is possible man you know i had someone that that tried to tried to hurt me and say that i mean i i really have had i've 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 had really amazing people in my life, but I've had people that have tried to hurt me too. I even brought my little scarf just in case I got emotional because I really might. I had someone recently try to tell me that everyone in my life is afraid of me. And that like, that really makes me upset just because- Well, I bet a lot of people in your life are afraid of I you. I think everyone in my life that I have in my close inner circle really loves me. And so to say that everyone in my life acts out of fear of me, my mom, I'm almost fucking 30. She will whip my ass. If, like, my mom will actually hit me. But I like, don't mean it in a bad way. No. I don't mean that they're afraid of you, like, like afraid you're going to do something terrible and they're afraid around you. I mean, you're a powerful thing. You're, you mean, this, there's no getting away from who you are. You got to kind of accept that you're Miley Cyrus. That, yeah, that You're I'm a very on. strange thing. There's, a, on. there's one Miley Cyrus on, in the universe that we know of. It's you. And you're really fucking famous, and you're really young. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. There's no getting around that. Yeah. And the fact that you feel guilt about all this, and the fact that you want things to be difficult, those are all the the best indicators that you're trying to do better. Yeah. Like you get it. Yes. You do get it, and you know that you have a hard road. And the people that don't think you have a hard road, they're out of their fucking mind. Like I didn't get famous until I was much later in life, I, and it was a slow drip it, into my 30s and into my 40s. That seems and healthier. It, took, it was way healthier. That seems healthy. But I also during the whole time did martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. So I was always humbled. I was always yeah. getting my ass kicked. Yeah. And I feel like those two things are the only things that saved me from my own brain. Yeah. Because you're, you're like, people are not designed to be famous. Yeah. That's why kings are all tyrants. Yeah. When you're the one person who gets to make all the calls, absolute power, can it corrupts absolutely. It's a common expression, right? Yes, absolutely. That happens with famous I'm people. I'm trying to have a good relationship with the power and feel feel a healthy dynamic towards The way you're it. describing it is perfect. Like, how many, like... 
Look, the Ellen situation. I don't know Ellen. Yeah. She's probably a nice lady, but she's in control. <laughs> yeah. She's in control of all these people, and they're all scared of her. She's like, fuck you, where's my tea? Right. You know, that that kind of shit, that's not a good place for a person to be, yeah. to, to have that See, much that's control where I'm over really, that really, really proud of myself that I don't live in that world. And I think I could probably also mark that up to animals and how much I love them. And I think I'm that's sure. what led to my veganism for a time right. was like the fact that tonight I have to put powder on my dog's ass. That makes <laughs> what me does happy. What the powder do? I don't get what the powder Apparently, does. Apparently, I think it kind of just hopefully conceals in some way how disgusting. It's <laughs> very, very out there and in your face and I think it's more of like a, a concealer. Mm. Um, but I'm really happy that Kate Moss Hey guys, I gotta say, Kate Moss makes me put baby powder on her ass. Just use that as the teaser. Uh, <laughs> one time, Kate Moss made me put baby powder on her ass. It's called Monkey Butt. So I um that that makes me happy. And like my one of my dogs, he's obsessed with drinking out of the pool, and so he like throws oh, up all the God. time, and it's disgusting. Yeah. And it honestly always makes me happy. And the one thing that I like about my dogs is that they don't know who I am. Right. I mean, they know that they got a good living situation. They're probably like, I wonder what she does for a living, but because <laughs> their life is pretty good, and they get to go to other cool places also um but yeah my dogs don't know who i am so they i like that and the you. cats scratch yeah. the shit out of me all the time and the pigs are horrible they bite my ankles i love it about them yeah well i bet that's one of the ways you achieve balance is through animals that's probably why you like them so exactly. much because they don't treat you like you're an alien they exactly. just treat you like your mama exactly yeah. and they yeah their their appreciation and gratitude level is something that i aspire to uh kind of recreate in my own life i love how gracious they are I think I, I really respect the way you're looking at things. Uh, I like you. I like the fact that you know that you're in this weird situation and you actually feel guilty for it. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily good to feel guilty, but the fact that you do yeah. is strong because yeah. it shows that you're conscious of how weird it is. Yeah. And, you and know, we've been working on my guilt a lot. And what's funny is like... I always want to cancel therapy when nothing's going on, which I guess is when we kind of need it. But I always mm. want to cancel it. And then we start talking about guilt and like we got it. You know, we got to work on your guilt and whatever. But I'm like, I only call you out of guilt. I don't want to do therapy and I don't even want to talk to you so, about what's going on in my life. So we can't get rid of it too much because guilt makes us do good things. I feel the yes. same way about fear and anxiety. Also. I do too. Healthy do too. fear, healthy anxiety. That's one of the things I like about weed. That's the I mask. Like, I like to get scared. You like I to do. get scared? Oh, yeah. I like to see the devil. That's my like friend that Joey any- Diaz says it. I don't like that anymore. I like to see the devil. I do not like that I like that to anymore. be paranoid. I like to freak out. I had, a, I had a very great ayahuasca experience that I saw some things. I saw, like, um, I guess people take ayahuasca a couple of times, end up seeing these snakes that end up, mm-hmm. like, taking you underground, and you kind of meet Mama Ayahuasca, and yeah. she walks you through everything. So ayahuasca, the woman that I was seeing... It was at the time where I just kind of started to become uh, like really dedicated to the veganism. And she reached down my throat and pulled out every dead animal I had ever eaten and made me throw it up. Whoa. But I didn't see the animal that it was. Like I didn't see like a cow or pig or chicken. Like I saw me puking up all the animals. I saw me picking up seals, puking up a seal, not fun. Elephants, all these different animals. And I would see all the animals coming out of my body. And uh, you're not supposed to have like a companion in your ayahuasca trip. It's supposed to be just about you. But I, uh, you know, it like my life, the good perks, I got special treatment. I could have my dog. So I had my dog and I held my dog the entire time. And I and I had a really, really intense trip. But since then, I, I haven't really loved getting high as much as I used to. It like <laughs> unlocked something. Uh, now I'm like, I just don't want to puke up seals again. Well, that sounds like you were dealing with some sort of personal guilt. I was dealing for, with guilt. Yeah, not just guilt for being famous, but also guilt for killing other lives to feed your own life that you already feel guilty for. Yes. It's all psychologically connected. This, yeah. Like what you see through psychedelics yep. is in, it's not just the psychedelic. It's what you bring to the psychedelic. That's yep. why set and setting is so important. Well, you're supposed to be sober, I think, yeah. two weeks before you actually do the ayahuasca, mm. which I was the only one that didn't do that. Yeah, I don't know if that's necessary. I, I got I a think little cray DMT will take you there no matter what. I've done some I good mean, DMT. I, I saw all my personalities greet me one time on DMT. Wow. All my personalities I saw, and then I was like... I saw me as like a really ugly crier and then like me <laughs> screaming, yelling at people. And I, yeah. it was nice. I, as I was sitting on the couch, as it started to hit me, they almost kind of like accordioned back into my body. You all know, my personality. The thing about all this craziness and the, the manic behavior <laughs> and all of your guilt and all of your anxiety, there's something that comes out in your music. There's some, there's some of that that comes out in this energy when you sing. 
And I don't know if it would be there without it. I, I, I think all brilliant artists are crazy. Hmm. I've, I've never met I one agree. that isn't. There's something that they have when you know they're, they're bottling it all up inside. And whether it's they're playing the guitar, whether they're singing, when they sing, it comes out. Yeah. You know, and when you sing, it comes out. But it's kind of that's how it's kind of new, also. Like it's coming out in a whole nother way. You yeah. know, I I look at well, videos. Well, you're different. I'm very different, yeah. and I I honestly feel like my voice changed a lot after the fire. I could sing better after the fire in some way. It's almost like it like unleashed something. Yeah, it, pain. It, like it did, yeah. and like maybe that's what it you is. Maybe it. I earned it. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is because I noticed that my voice got better as I had Well, it's also probably you're more comfortable with who you are having gone through that. Yeah. The thing about having like a really, not an easy life, but a privileged life, like you've, you know, you've had so many doors open to you and so much wealth and so much success. Like when you do something hard or something hard happens to you, at least you go, okay, I got through that. That was real. Yeah. Like I earned that. I earned my, my p point of view, my p place of peace after a storm yeah. and every storm that you go through, like, that's why when you listen to Johnny Cash sing hurt, man, I mean, that is like, well, yeah. how old was he when he did that cover? He was like 80. Yeah. I was that's on the last all those years. Time. Yeah. God damn. You hear yeah. that voice and it's like, there's something that, it that's me cold coming chills thinking right, about it. Right. There's yeah. something that comes through hmm. in the, in the music, in the voice. There's something that comes through in someone's art when they've experienced things. Yeah. And this is, this is what you're getting. I mean, this is what your emotions and all that shit that, that bothers you and freaks you out and all the chaos. When you get in front of that microphone, that comes out. It's almost, yeah, I guess your life is almost like it's kind of art in the way of kind of, I feel like I'm always doing performance art in some way, even in my personal life. That's you know? a problem, right? That's, that's it's hard scary. to just be. It's scary. It's hard to be in the moment and just be. You always feel like you're putting on a show. It is. Well, it's because your whole life you develop putting on a show. You know, and we talked, you know, obviously I think a little bit about kind of in the beginning of this talking about technology and how it's changed things for me and streaming and all these things. But it's also given everyone a voice. Yeah. Uh, the people that don't need one sometimes to say the <laughs> things that they right. they say, it gives them a lot of power and you've got to have a lot of restraints. Like, yeah. listen. You're sitting with someone that loves to do drugs. I can't take drugs anymore. I want to, but because there's a repercussion, I won't. That's the same way I feel about looking at shit and yeah. looking at Daily Mail and looking at these things. I, I won't do it, not because it's not tempting and because, in a way, that gives you a rush too, right? You look at it, you get yeah. those adrenalines and the butterflies. I'm someone that likes to get high. It gets you high drama. So I try not to watch any dramatic TV or things like that because I'm also kind of a parrot. I'm a sponge. I never grew out of that. You know, kids, they hear something, they can do it. Like, I've always been like that. If you show mm -hmm. me once, I can do it right now. But that's why I shouldn't watch dramatic television. Right. Well, that's why I always feel weird when girls are really into those true crime shows about rape and murder like, and shit. Like, no. Get it? Shut that off. Yeah, no, it's not. Jesus Christ. I don't think it's really, really that healthy. That's why I love RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nothing really harmful is going to come out of just slapping some wigs on and <laughs> calling it a day. Would they do death drops in a whole other way than what you guys do out there on the mats? This is like, this is some intense shit. I have never watched. What You've is, never seen a death drop? What does RuPaul's Drag Race do? What do oh they do? Oh my God, what? This is crazy. It's my favorite. Okay, honestly, <laughs> like RuPaul, RuPaul, when I said earlier I'm not religious, that's a lie. I am RuPaul's batarian. Like I, <laughs> I fuck with RuPaul. RuPaul is God. RuPaul lives by, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love anybody else? RuPaul can I get an amen? RuPaul on a ranch in Wyoming. I He's love that. He's got it all figured out. Yeah. RuPaul, Mama Ru, she's my life. And the reason I love to watch her so much is really there's this there's this a thing that they do on the show and it's called the reading room. It's called the library. What is the show? Because okay, I know the, the show name of the show, but I don't even like, know what it is. You know, uh, so the drag queens from all over the country, and now they're going all over the world. They've got RuPaul's Drag Race everywhere. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. It's all over the world. I watch RuPaul's Korea, RuPaul's Canada. We watch everything. Oh, and here so, it is? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is one of Whoa. my favorite, Alyssa Edwards. Jesus Christ. I, I think I might even be in the audience. You know who that is? Yes! I, ah! Ow. That's what I'm telling Ooh. you. Look at that guy clapping. Oh, my God. Look I'm, at the way they're clapping. I was here. Look at her. This is my Look at her. The way they're clapping yes. is amazing. Oh, my God. Whoa. Yes. Kick off the Latrice. shoes. See, oh, I you knew know who that is. Yeah, I know Latrice. Oh my God! 
That's a big person the, she's to be got doing a song that kind of a called, split. called uh, Big Big Girl. Mm. And she says, wait, come over here and pile some more food up on this plate. I ain't going to the gym, bitch. I ain't uh, losing no weight. Look at me. I'm sickening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sickening. Ooh, I may be fat, bitch, but you're ugly and I can lose weight. Oh, shit. I'm right there. There I am. Oh, my I'm God. I'm in the audience. So are my two friends that are here with me today. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, bitch. <laughs> she's so sickening. <laughs> Yas, Kennedy. You know who Kennedy is? Oh, I know every single they one of them. The same move. They drop down and do the splits. And that's what I think when I'm watching your shows too. You know, all the same stuff. But, <laughs> but yeah. this this move of the splits, they all do this. That's the move. It's the money move. Oh, the money move is Look the out, splits. she got money in her hand. Yeah. Look, they're throwing it they're at her. They're throwing money at her. Can she get split too? She's, Bam. She's an OG. They call this show I Do the Splits. Oh, death drop. Yeah, I got a highlight video of all these. It's called death, Best Death Drops and oh, Splits. Oh, I've seen this so. one. So is that. Death drop when you do the splits? Uh, that one's hoping. a death drop and split. That's oh. also a very, uh, well, that's, oh, here she goes. Yeah. Ooh, ka, ooh, yas. Ow! Bam. So is that a death drop? No, that was a split. Okay. What is the difference? Death drop, you'll see it's when you go from standing. Let's see. No, that's a split. They're all splits. You got to find death <laughs> drops. That's not a death drop. Look mm. up, uh, it's season, I believe, maybe 10, or no, season nine. Laganja Stranja. Laganja Stranja. Oh, there, that's, that's a death, a death drop. That's her. Laganja Stranja. Oh, there you go. What about Jinx Monsoon? We love Jinx. Oh, she Ooh. just does a bad split. Bit oh, me. A, that she needs a little bit. That of, wasn't uh, great. Flexibility. We love there. Monet. She's Miss Congeniality. Monet needs a little bit of flexibility. I don't love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. That's funny. Like they have to go all the Alyssa's way. Alyssa's my favorite. Oh, Alyssa's so your she's favorite. got her own show. She she's a uh, she actually did the VMAs with me. Now, you have to so do she's a, a friend. full split to be taken seriously. Oh, there. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's I'm a serious right there. split. I'm clapping. You can't have a bent knee? Is that no. disrespectful? I mean, you're not going to get any cash on the stage. Oh, if your knee is bent, it's not good. No. Mm. That's Laganja. She's got the best one. Boom. That was her big split, Woo. but she's going to probably do another death drop. Another They're probably, death there, drop. Right here. This is a real death drop right here. Ready? Go. Yaw. That's a death drop. That's a death drop. That, that looks like a, a good way to blow out your ACL. <laughs> <laughs> look at that right knee. That don't look good. Oh, man. If I was doing commentary on her, I'm Here like, go. she's going to be hurt. Yeah. Boom. Boom. That is terrible for your joints. It's It's got to be awful. Oh, look at her knee. Here she goes. That's oh, terrible. Cameron. Okay, here we go. Bam. Cameron Michaels. Oh, that's a full side split. Look at that. My goodness. That's a lot so of So when craziness. you ask me why my hips hurt so bad, it's from practice, that it's practicing this. No. Oh, okay. I don't, don't. death drop. That, I do not death drop. That will fuck you up. I mean, that's what fucked Prince's hip up. No, I don't do that. Yeah. I tried it one time at GAY, and it was worth it. What is GAY? Uh, my favorite gay club in London. Oh. It's, boy, they were just fucking <laughs> nailed it on the head. G-A-Y. <laughs> just call the club gay. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's so gay, it's just called gay. <laughs> why not? It's iconic. What did you say? What are you wowing? What's that? What happened? Uh oh, this one's really crazy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. That's There's the craziest real... death drop ever. Aces. So that's, wow. That's yeah. a brain damage death drop. That's a death drop from five feet up. That's crazy. Honestly, but, like, I feel like I've come alive since watching this. What it does to me as, like, on like a, on a level that I just, like, it, I love it so fucking much. Like, what, I are love they scoring it. them? Uh, well, usually like in the ball, like usually event? in the ball, which is what you're doing, you're bringing it to the ball, like you're doing like okay. a runway. Okay. Usually it's a one through ten, ten being the best, and it, you say tens, tens, tens across the board. So this, what's happening here? Oh, this is a really good performance that I love. Mm. Um, <laughs> and these fellas. and this, these are the yeah, they're pit crew. Pit crew. They're kind of like the the bitches that bring out the shit, and like they're mm. kind of like they kind of get props. um. They, yeah, they help. They exactly. Yeah, that's what I like about the show too, is I think all the the men kind of like having to be the background dancers because usually blue paint you look for is outrageous. She's a, her name's she's Alaska Thunderfuck. Avatar, Alaska Thunderfuck. Yeah, she's one of my favorites. This might be my new favorite show. I'm telling you, Alaska. I might have to start watching. Alaska Thunderfuck is absolutely my favorite queen. Jesus, I love Kitty Girl. I think you've already had three or four favorite queens just in the, the well, time. Well, Alaska we're this clip. is the one that I love her personal music. What about Alyssa? You turning your back on Alyssa? No, Alyssa is my favorite performer. Oh, Alyssa is my favorite performer slash dancer. Oh, I don't. And Alaska Thunderfuck. Alaska has got amazing music. Oh, so Alaska Thunderfuck's a yes. musician. Okay. Her her big hit single is called "Your Makeup Is Terrible." <laughs> 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 uh, I might have to watch this it's show. It's really good. I That's to... Detox. Detox. 
Yeah, that's hilarious. I actually grew up uh, hanging out with her. She worked at Beecher's Madhouse, which was like a freaky club. Oh, yeah, I, I met that so dude she, before. Yeah, I met so, him at the comedy store. So she, I end up, I kind of, that was like my, you know, Studio 54, like oh, that that's era. Hilarious. That's what I did. So she was there. She was one of the performers, so I know her. That is hilarious. I grew God up God damn him. it. So is this show like this every week? Yes. And so every week it's RuPaul and And all... until there's a new episode, I watch the same one every day. And who are the folks on the panel? Uh, so usually there's a guest judge and then his best friend, Michelle Visage, and that's Todrick Hall. Oh, my God. Who is like a big choreographer and artist. Hilarious. I know a lot about this show. You do. <laughs> there they are. How often do you watch? Is this like your watch on every, tour? I'm watch. I'm so thirsty for new episodes. I'm watching <laughs> RuPaul Canada right now. <laughs> RuPaul's not even on it. It's just a spinoff. What? What? The, what? Well, How do they have RuPaul Canada it. if it's a spinoff? She's a genius. But she, she's the new McDonald's. She's okay. got it. So she just said, "Listen, I'm just going to put my name on this and just spread it out to Thailand and Love it. put it in Iceland. Oh yeah, okay. everywhere, everywhere around the world. Wow. They're really fun to watch ones around. But without Rue, it's really not the same because she drops knowledge. Knowledge? Knowledge. Like what kind of knowledge? Like when I do feel guilty about like all my, you know, kind of what we talked about. of Just like when I start feeling that guilt and I feel mm -hmm. guilt that like when I tell someone I can't do this because I need to focus on me or I need to like take the time that I'm cooking for you to be using that time for my meditation. And I become that person like I just give so much. Right. And I just love that she says, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love anybody else? I really love that. Um, it's a good I'm, point. It's a really good point. I'm trying to just like that needs to be tattooed on my on my brain. So. Well, RuPaul's also been around a long time. Also so a really great through peer. All the ups and downs and and look what she created like from a world that I mean still even in 2020 that's just not acceptable. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. It's none of my friends in Nashville. They all don't know what I'm watching. <laughs> and I can't believe that. And it's just like the way that she's won. I think she's up for like 14 Emmys this year. What what was her? What did she break out with? What was like the the first thing that she got? popular with. Uh, booty. What's her movie? Something Booty. Um, Something You could booty. look it up. RuPaul Booty. I'm going to be so annoyed because I have the movie? DVD. Yeah. Was she famous for a song? Like what was, Yes. This yes. Is, uh, like, you better work. That's right. Supermodel. Yeah, work it, girl. Right, work Give it a twirl. Girl. Right, yeah. right, right. What year was that? When, like, what is it? 80s, 90s? Yeah. That might have been right around 90s, the time your dad popped. 90s. 93. Yeah. Why he didn't collab with Rue, I'll never understand. That would have been that would have pushed him over the top. I really would have. Yeah, yeah. So RuPaul drag that, uh, remarkable longevity for RuPaul, right? I'm telling you, RuPaul. Right? RuPaul is the only one that, in my book, compares to Dolly. That is crazy if you really stop and think about that. Oh, that is yes. thirty fucking years. That's of her. Longevity. Little, that's her. Oh, wow. Look like at the picture of her. <gasps> there you go. <laughs> Girl, Isn't it? Look how beautiful. Look at the exaggerated femininity that drag queens embrace. I, I love that aspect of it. That's called that painting. That's called painting the for way. the gods. Painting for the gods. Painting How's for the go? gods. Show me. Painting for the gods. I'm not painted for the gods right oh, now. Oh, you mean but with the, the uh, makeup. makeup? So when you're like you're painted for the gods, that means oh. like your makeup is like you have drawn on that face. <laughs> no, is that painted. only? Is that a drag queen expression? My, painted yeah. for the gods. Uh, yeah, is it okay to say drag, drag queen? Drag queen's all all good. Okay. That yeah. one hung around. We love drag queen. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain expressions from there's back even in the day been that you can't say anymore. There's even a drag queen on the show <laughs> that is a straight male <laughs> that so just does drag. Wait, what? There's a straight male on Are you on sure? Here. Yes. I bet you could talk him into some gay stuff. <laughs> he's a straight male. He's got to get him drunk. Sure he's straight. Isn't that all of us? Wink. Wink. He is. Oh, yeah, for sure. I believe what he said. Well, saying. he's probably really good at it, right? Really good as a drag queen? He knows what's sexy. He knows what he wants. Mm, he what right, he wants. right. I love right, that. Right. Yeah. Well, that I was explained to me about some men who li lo love women, but like to dress as women. Like there's yeah. a, a kink. Yeah. Like they like to be I actually dressed sexy. as a man for RuPaul's Drag Race. My mm -hmm. name was BJ, if we can show you that, because I'm kind of like a hot dude. Really? I look a lot like Justin Bieber. People tell me that all the time. Like when I, if I have a little scruff and like a side swoop, I go Bieber really quick. Really? Yeah. But my name was BJ on the show, and I dressed as a guy, and I, I kind of thought it was kinky. So yeah, do you feel like a bad girl when you dress like a boy? Like, do you, is this no, this is twenty twenty. Like playing with gender roles is just so not. There's no shock value to it anymore. There's no shock value there's to it. There's no shock value. It to it. Not a in my not in my when, community. Oh, in your community of drag queens. In my people. community, and painted this, for like, the gods. We're painted for the gods. We're beat. The beat. That's like you're beating your mug. 
What? That means you've fucking pounded that shit into your face. Like, even if you took a wipe and went like this, you'd still look like a woman. Like, you, you have be- beat that's what it's your called? mug. Yes. You beat your mug? Yes. You should see me. If I had my brush in here, I'd show you what, how you do it. Wow. You just, like, pound it. There it goes. Oh, yeah, there what? I am. There you are? That's oh, yeah, you? so they can't see me. I'm in okay. a double-sided mirror, so they just see themselves, but I see them. That's you? Yep. Oh, that's hilarious. That that's... is the fakest looking beard I've ever seen in my life. That's like Team America World Police. Remember when the dude had to put on a fake, remember when the, the puppet put the fake wig on? The fake, yeah, it didn't uh, work very well. On? They recognized me right away. Yeah. But I swear it's the voice. But maybe well, it was the beard. It's your neck. It might have been the beard. My you've neck? Got, you've got a girl's neck. Too femme? Yeah, you have a girl's neck. There's no way you're a guy. It's Are you not sure even about that? physically possible. Are you sure about that? 100%. Yeah. If I saw you, if you were like with the fake beard on your face, you would know, and then the neck. I'd be like, "That's a chick, hundred percent." Damn, sorry. It's okay. Do some that's of those why... drag queens, they could pass as a large woman. That's why I brought a scarf. What if I wear this? Oh, okay. Am I still to a cover woman? your neck? Yeah, you need a hoodie or something. Like zip it up and put it over the top. I, I think you're a young boy. <sighs> Hoodies aren't quite... fashion. Hoodies aren't no. Fashion? Hoodies are fashion. Some hoodies, of them are right. Hoodies are fashion. I like wearing them in my own time. Just don't want to be seen in public. You wear hoodies on your own time? Yeah, but not, not in public. In public? No. Oh, why not? Because I'm Dolly Parton's goddaughter. She would actually <laughs> shame me to the end of the earth. So are there rules? I've if done you're a tight lot of Dolly? things. Like I'm in here telling you about my ayahuasca trips. This is all fine and dandy with Dolly. Let's not even start talking about hoodies. Oh, okay. You know what Dolly I mean? Dolly won't let you wear hoodies. I mean, Dolly just it's not Dolly approved. <laughs> <laughs> this earth needs to be Dolly approved. I'm telling mm. you. Oh my god, that's so funny. Dolly is everything. Somebody had a funny tweet about Dolly Parton once. They said, I just saw a picture of Dolly Parton when she was young. And she goes, and the, the tweet said, what the fuck did Jolene look like? I want to know who this uh, Jolene chick is. Right? She must have been ridiculous. Jolene must have been a fucking yeah. 150. I mean, there was no one more beautiful than I Dolly. Know. She and, was about as hot as it gets. And I love the way that she created like her identity, too. Mm-hmm. You know, She created her identity from the, the town whore yeah. that everyone made fun of. And she was like, I was looking at him like, uh, this is an entire brand i loved it and she goes i just tried to recreate that that's hilarious yeah and she also just was so nice oh my god it just came through in everything she did it's like she was so likable man she brings merch everywhere and she will get from the bottom to the top whoever worked on that set today getting a dolly hat getting a (laughs) you know signed getting donuts delivered like she is just she's just as cool as it gets i mean i do think that that's a big reason too that I've I've been able to I, not even because she's going to be mad but you just don't want to disappoint Dolly. Well, it's just you are very fortunate to be connected to this like this lineage, you know, the, the fact that you know you're you're tight with Dolly fucking Parton. Like if you're a young country singer, a man and you know Willie Nelson, like yeah. holy shit. Yeah. Like you're tight with Willie, like you you got to you got to cultivate that relationship. Yeah. That was kind of my dad with George Jones. That's who mm, I grew up around my yeah. whole life. Like George was my dad's right hand. It was yeah. really painful for him when he died because that was my dad's just stake in the grass, mm, you know? Yeah. For sure. Yeah, this, there's something about that, right? Like this old guard that like nurtures the young people coming up. Yeah. That relationship. And I really want to, I want to be that person. If I, if I make it through the treacherous path we've You're gonna discussed. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You know, I think, I think so. If I, anybody's going to make it that's gone through what you've, you've gone through, the way you're looking at it is... Look, it ain't easy, kid, but you can that. do it. You can Thank do you. it. Well, I, I would want to be that way with the next artist, and I still am. Like, even from my position, I never like to see say or seem like I think I know something that a new artist doesn't. But I've been doing it now 15 years. My show came out when I was 12. I'm 27, going to be 28 in a month. It's not even about whether or not you know something that they don't. It's just what you know. It's, just, it's, 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 it's almost lot of irrelevant experience. what they don't know. It's what you know. And I just feel like it's kind of, you know, I never knew jealousy or competition through Dolly, through Joan, through Stevie. That's why when I reach out to Stevie, she says, like, I know that this Corona thing's going on, but can we sit six feet apart in my backyard and talk? I just want to be there for you. That's what she wrote last time, you know, and it's like going through what I'm kind of been going through over the last two years. All these I think, honestly, some of the physical pain is growing pains. You know, like I feel like some of the growth that I've had. Stress. Stress and, sure. and 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 quickly just stretching like beyond mm-hmm. beyond you know and I just but just the, the, the lack of 
being stable like mm-hmm. in your mind and the tension that stuff manifests itself in back injuries all the time yeah people always have weird back pains that are related to just their life being yeah. all fucked up yeah you just you just you're always tense yeah i i, you know? I am i know like my back cracks like crazy mm-hmm. everything you know down to when I'm asked what hurts, I literally feel embarrassed to say from the end of my toe to the top of my head pretty much hurts a lot mm. of the time. But yeah. I'm working on that pain management, and I do like CBD. CBD is awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. CBD. It's gigantic. Love it. Yeah, but I, for like for you, I can't say this enough. You need rigorous exercise. You need something like really hard. So when it's done, you're fucking spent. Yeah. Like, <sighs> yeah. Just laying on the ground, can't breathe, puddle of sweat, that yeah. type of shit. You that's need to glad exercise a, the demons. I have a seven month uh, German Shepherd at uh, home, so that seems like a good. If anyone's going to put me, partner. that's who's going to yeah. put me through it. So, but you need someone to g- a good push idea. you. You need a. You, you need to purge the demons. Yeah. You got demons. Yeah. Yeah, they're <laughs> in there, a hundred percent. But again, like you don't want to. You gotta hold on to them a little bit. I know. I like to use them to my advantage. Fucking sometimes. music, man. There's something about the demons that come out in the music. There's, I mean, look. That's always why. B- the, the the great artist like the thing about Robert Johnson right they, they even thought he sold his soul to learn how to play blues the way he did mm-hmm. and that's because it's because there's the fucking life experience came yeah. out in his music yeah you need both of those you can't be some person mm-hmm. who just lives in a fucking monastery and breathes in and breathes out all day and then put out amazing art yeah you have to have pain and life I know that and, and I think and, that's the, you know I guess one of our words we've used pretty consistently today is balance yeah and i think that's pretty much got to be my mantra yeah you well know? for you i mean you are you you are born into this treacherous path you have this crazy position that you find yourself thrust into where you're very famous at a very early age and also there's also this, these weird expectations because you're famous for a disney show mm-hmm. right which is even crazier and right. then Post Disney show, it's and like, then that oh, got erased by right. craziness and wild and you know mm-hmm. being a provocateur, and yeah. so now I feel like I'm breaking out of like another role in a way, you know. Um, right. You're becoming just yourself instead of a rebellious person who's yeah. trying to escape the the sort of the boundaries of your persona. Yeah, that well, that's why I Hannah wanted. Montana. You know, I have in in my music video, I have me with the microphone with the microphone stand, and mm-hmm. the reason why that was so important was like. I'm not just fucking getting naked anymore and right. swinging around. This it's about the music comes first, and right. I feel like in, I think people are very visual. And if you can hold the fucking microphone in your hand and say, "This is who I am. Mm. This comes first. By the way, I don't come without this. Right. Like at the VMAs, they tried to get me to get rid of my microphone for something that I'm going to be doing, and I said, "Fuck no! Like, what do you think? I I, I can't be Britney Spears with the headset and the snake. What's important? Mm. I don't want the snake. I I don't want the gag. Um, you know. And and there was actually even some comments that day about um it was just an interesting conversation in regards to lighting because i've i've been kind of learning a lot you know from directors i didn't go to film school but i have been put through that in that way so i directed the last video and that's what i look forward to doing in the next like 10 years i'd love to write and direct and you know kind of work on film in that way and so now i have a better understanding of cameras and lighting operation and so i was just asking some questions about not even on some diva shit like i only want to get shot from this side whatever i wanted the lights to be turned off and Mm -hmm. that uh the lighting of the of the room to be just lighting me so no key light no beauty light and beauty light is always used on women and i said turn the fucking lights off you would never tell travis scott or adam levine that he couldn't turn the beauty light off i want this red lighting they said okay okay we'll do it you know what just same thing that we would do with the guys because like Mm -hmm. that's what i want and then something that I was doing, which I can't say, but something that I was doing for the VMAs, my bracelets kept getting caught and all this shit. And they said, you know, you wanted to be treated like a guy and lit like a guy. We wouldn't be dealing with this if a guy was doing it. And I said, well, a guy wouldn't be doing this because a guy doesn't sell your show with sex the way that I'm going to. And, I, and I'm aware of that. I know you about these conversations with who? I had these the conversations directors? with the directors talking to me. That's a ridiculous conversation. It's a ridiculous conversation, also embarrassing, um, uh, because just any the, the conversation. Once you see what happens on the show, you'll understand more, um, if you see it. But it might be hard not to, you know. If you take walks like I do, you might see it, whether you want to or not. <laughs> if you take um, walks, if, I, if you walk down the street and there's, I don't know, right. maybe people sell magazines. I don't know about in Jamie COVID will pull time, it up. or you'll you'll see it at up. some point, and you guys can He'll discuss show me. it. Uh, so yes, and so so they're asking a lot of questions about that, and you know, like, well, how long is glam gonna take, and all this stuff, and I was like. 
I mean, I can't really nail it in enough, too. It's like I did come from the world of Dolly Parton, and I love pop culture for entertainment and escapism. And, again, you know, we're joking about the hoodie conversation, but I mean, like, you know, for me, I, I there's nights where I don't do that. You know, at Chris Cornell, I had on a pair of black pants and a fucking Chris Cornell t-shirt. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Right. The VMAs is a pop culture show celebrating pop culture. And I wanted to bring, especially in this time of, you know, COVID-19, all these at-home performances, like, I want to give my fans escapism. Good old pop culture. This is surrealism. How hard is it to deal with people that are directing you like that? How hard is it to deal with, like, other people and their vision and their talking and their this and their that when you are just trying to get out what's in your head and what your your vision is? You're I trying get it to- done. You get I it get done. it done, but I the my two the balance that I found is firm and kind. I don't lose my kindness, mm. but I also don't become a mat. But I am firm about what I want, but in a way that you know you might expect someone might say, "Man, she was a diva. She was a bitch." But it's again, it's like okay, like have the weekend come in here and say the same thing, and you would say him, you know, or Kanye is like a creative mm. god, and right. it's like, come on, why am I not getting right. that? I'm like you know. A, creative mastermind but i'm becoming a bitch it's like no one would ever say that about kanye west choosing what lighting he wants on a performance yeah it's such a delicate balance too right because when someone's as popular as you like you kind of you know what the fuck you want to do like and if this person who you're using as a director if you don't have a deep relationship with them yeah that's why i started directing my own shit yeah um and that's why i loved making my last video so much and directing it was because one i thought about my scenes almost like a relationship you're having a relationship with it when it's over it's over the what's painful isn't the relationship it's that when it's done you holding on for that extra however long you try to make it work something that's not working that's what i did on the video and that's what i hated when i was a kid you know from directors not knowing what they want and then getting frustrated with the child for not performing properly it's Mm. like but you're not communicating and i'm a child and you're an adult and you're not communicating properly so you're working me into the ground to get something that you don't know what you want um and that was always really frustrating with me and i think that's why now a non-negotiable in my relationship or dating life is you better know what you want um because i i'm just not interested in taking you know another 10 years like i did with my first love figuring that out now, when you are doing these, like when you're putting together music, do you have anybody that, like, if you're doing an album or you have a song, do you, do you collaborate with people? Would you write the songs entirely on your own and bring them to other musicians? Like, it's, how do you construct something? It's been different. So on bangers, which I kind of think my career as like a as a solo artist, I guess, kind of started there. I mean, I mean, not really. When I when I started working, you know, on my very first record, um, and it was called Breakout. And it was because I was kind of breaking out of the character that How I was in. How long ago was this? Like 2007, I guess. Mm. Maybe something like that. Crazy. 2007. 13 years ago. Holy shit. 2007, right? yeah. And I already had two ec- records out already, but they were as Hannah Montana. So you were 14. Mm-hmm. I'm 27, yeah. That's no. bananas. Yeah. Okay, so when you're, on, you're on Hannah Montana. And, and I had already had two albums that were like number one and had done all the things. And so then I had this like. How much were you working? Pressure. Uh, every single day. Every Sunday too? Sunday every uh, Sunday because I want to. Jesus Christ. Sunday because I wanted to. All day. I remember one time I came home and my dad almost didn't let me go back on the road because I was so thin. Um, And he was like, what have you been eating? I'm like, turkey, cheese, glasses, you know, and he's like, holy shit. Who's taking care of you when you're on the road if it's not your dad? My grandma. My grandma and my mom. My mom, uh, my mom has been my, like, my mom is the reason I'm sitting here So your mom and your grandma would come with you on the road and you would just go town to town Arena to arena, uh-huh. boom, 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 boom. Eat, yep. sleep, wake up. There you go. Here's the mic. School. You look beautiful. Go to school. school. Oh, school. Get school. I did what school in the morning. What the fuck kind of school are you doing? I had my teacher on the road with me, who was oh, like, Jesus. was the best, who I loved. I loved, loved, loved. But love. no kids. What do you mean? No, no, no friends. No, no. other kids. Uh, just my little sister and my little brother. How weird is that? That was pretty weird. It made me, it made my sister's life a little difficult also because her idea of like success is completely blown out of proportion also. Oh, because yeah. Because she's watched, and my brother too. But my brother is very simple and I love him so much and he'll probably be listening to this. And my brother just has his chickens and his ducks and he's in Nashville and he's in, you know, small little place and, and he's living more. I, I, I sometimes wonder if he's the smartest of us all. I don't well, know. Maybe he has less stress. He has less stress. Yeah. Um, and That's he, the thing he about stress, though. It's like, 
But he's also a fucking badass talent, but he just saves it. He doesn't want to be on that level. Like, he wants to make music because he loves it. He wants the people that are interested in him to hear it. He doesn't have the, I gotta grind till Does I'm fucking... Does he have some shit that's online right now? He has some shit that's online right now. What's his name? Brazen Cyrus. And how do you get? Does he have an Instagram? He YouTube, has an Instagram. SoundCloud, He'll kill me. Uh, but he, he has a one. He has a Spotify. He has a song. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, out. And he did Fallon. And after he did Fallon, he's like, I don't think I want to do that ever again. I'm like, what wow. the fuck? He's like, man, I was that was too scary. No, thank you. And he didn't. I'm wow. like, all right, good for him. He had two shows. One at City Walk Universal down the street, and he said, no, <laughs> someone said I was fat and my hair was ugly. I'm like, you know, <laughs> many times my I've been called fat and my hair is ugly, and he's like, I'm not ready for that. He didn't perform again. Then he's like, all right, I'm gonna try it again, Fallon. I'm like, you're gonna go from Universal City Walk to Fallon, whatever. So I go there and I try to change his shirt, and he's like, no, this is me. I'm wearing my flannel, you know, the whole thing. So he goes out and kills it. And he goes, uh. Uh-uh. Not for me. Wow. No. So. That's it. Well, you know, maybe growing up and seeing all the crazy shit that happened to you, it's almost like growing up around an alcoholic and never wanting to drink. Exactly. It can go one way or the other, yeah. right? You either become my little sister who kind of wants it, mm-hmm. you know, and she, she's she got a record out that I love called The End of Everything. And what's her name? Noah Cyrus. And it's the most depressing EP you'll ever listen to. She's really? 20 years old. It's depressing. She's e- she's emo. She's like an emo oh, kid. Boy. Uh, Why is she emo? Maybe because she was on the road. That's doing, what it is. Like school. She has a song where she says, um, "My sister's like sunshine, and it'll follow her wherever she goes." But I'm more like a rain cloud. You know, it's like oh, she's wow. really got this idea of me. Um, Maybe but she, she needs to go to the doctor. She is. <laughs> We're all at the doctor a lot. We we have like a salary doctor that just. Oh boy. We got to deal with that. Yeah, she's she's dealing with it. She's dealing with it, yeah. but she's only twenty, so I I, I worry about. It's the her. hardest age for kids today, too. It's so hard, dude. If you don't look like these girls on Instagram right they now, they don't I'm even gonna, look like these girls. I know. You want to see something crazy? Yeah, I do. Look at my ten year old did. We were in uh, a restaurant. She took a picture of me. My my ten year old thinks it's fucking hilarious when mm-hmm. she does this. She, um, you know where it is, Jamie, right? That he'll put it up on the screen. She took a picture of me, and she was, she goes, "Let me take a picture of you. Make a face." I'm like, I meant like just uh-huh. cra- crazy kissy face. And then she put it through this filter. That's me. No. Yes. That's not real. That's real. That's me. That's me through Wait, a filter. Wait, that's not real. Yeah, that's me. That's are you the real, fucking kidding that's me? That's how bad these goddamn filters are. What's wrong with your? I don't know. What's happening with there? Okay, so that's the original picture. Right, that's me and her at a restaurant, and that's what it came, what came out. And meanwhile, if you know my ten-year-old, she's fucking hilarious. She thinks it's so funny. She's like, "That's ah! that's not right." That is how fucked up these goddamn filters how are. How did why she these do that? Are, it's just a filter in an app. That's why these girls are so insecure because they think all these people that they see online are perfect, but every one of those bitches is using filters. All of them. All no. of them. All of them. And even people that I'm friends with that contacted me, like, this is crazy. Like, I use filters, but that fu- that's fucking so crazy. So I don't like, have a filter on my phone, and I need to know, though, what your daughter's using. Like, I don't you even don't understand this technology. You don't want it. It's trick. It's witchcraft. It's fucking trickery. Yeah, I don't. I don't I've never. I couldn't believe that was real. The only thing I have on my phone is where I can swipe on uh, the Instagram story thingy and turn Paris. You, have oh. your, you know, where it kind of blurs out your pores or something. That's all I got. Don't even use that. It's ridiculous. It looks pretty good. No, you look great. You don't it need that really shit. Good. No, it makes you look like a cartoon. It doesn't make you I look really good. I don't do any good. of the shit with but like. Girls want that. They want like no flaws. They want everything to be like cloudy. Yeah, like, I know. It, that's basically what it does. It makes you look like a fucking cloud. But no. that's not good. I know, I know. There's so much unprogramming to do on me. It's so much on everybody. There's it's so not much just unprogramming. You. It's all these women out there that are they're these unrealistic expectations. Like I'm sure you saw that Khloe Kardashian picture that looks nothing like her. Where it like goes from like the hairlines, like it's n- yeah, nonsense. Yeah, they, they they used they used Photoshop on her. I mean, it's like CGI. Yeah. I mean, you might as well be looking at a monster movie. Like, she turns into a werewolf. It's not what, that's not who she is. No, it's no. It's crazy. I mean, and even, like, for me, I think, you know, in my real life, I don't wear any makeup. I don't even, like, today someone asked me, like, what do you use on your hair? And I'm, like, shampoo and conditioner. Like, I don't do anything to my hair. I don't really do anything. And that's been really fucking tough for me over the last few months, too, because I don't know why. I guess I... I, I I think as that keeps happening, like as these technology things keep mm-hmm. happening on Instagram and these filters keep getting better and better, I'm compared to the people altering, you know, themselves either physically, like with all these 
things you can do and lasers and all the shit or to the filters. And I've had a really hard time with that, you know, and I think um, it's hard for me the other day. You know, I get papped walking around my neighborhood in like a really shitty, dirty Fleetwood Mac T-shirt that I've been in for five days. Dude, and it hurts. Just don't go online. Just just detox from all that shit. No like, Wi-Fi don't pay, like B-Ray. Just don't pay attention to all these other women that are doing these fucking wacky filters. Because yeah. that's where everybody gets fucked up. It's the comparison thing. There's a book called The Coddling of the American Mind uh, by Jonathan Haidt. And he talks about young girls and depression. Yeah. And this gigantic uptick in depression that directly coincides with the invention of the iPhone. Uh-huh. And that as the iPhone came up and then pictures and then uh, social media apps. So at first it was... A lot of it was social media and people being mean to each other on Twitter and all those things because you're not seeing each other. I've There's listened no a empathy. lot about this, about the, the iPhone kind of, I guess, mimicking, yes. right, Vegas uh, slot machines and things. Oh, yeah. Like, there's, it's actually, isn't it, I think it was called, what I listened to was the slot machine in your pocket. Yeah, well, it is a lot like that. But yeah. the thing about it with women in particular, with young girls, is that they're comparing themselves to these cartoons. These people that aren't even really like that picture of me. You know, when I got sober, I had to delete all the apps on my phone where I could purchase things. Like I had to take off Amazon and all the things yes. on my phone because walking around with that slot machine in my pocket, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm getting these bills and things. And, and yes, I care about that. And I want to live financially, responsibly and all right. the things. And I'm looking at this. And I'm like, I don't even remember doing this. Like it's right. totally like being high on drugs. It is. Um, and things started showing up and you're like, what the hell? It's too easy. I'm in the middle of a book now about that. It's called Irresistible. Mm -hmm. Let me find that. It's, it's on my Instagram too, Jamie. Um, Irresistible is this book that is about how people are addicted. It's by uh, Adam Alter. And uh, it's about how people are addicted to your phones yeah. and applications, but it also goes into just the actual physical aspect of addiction and how it works on the brain and how we always like to think of addiction as like it's something that you get hooked physically and you can't live without it. No, it, no it's something that you have a compulsion to, to use and you can't avoid that compulsion for some reason. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be good. It's no, not a, and it it's can not happen a good with feeling. It can happen with things Anything. like love. And yes. I mean, I've even felt that too when it's like... In the most stressful times of my life, it's like, okay, I can't reach for drugs anymore. Okay, I don't want to reach for bad food. All right, I'm going to reach for someone to love me. And it's right. like, you know, coming down from something all the time. Well, we, the beginning part of phone. love is the most powerful drug you're ever going to take. It's like cocaine. When you, Yeah, it's dopamine. Oh, straight dopamine, right to the fucking veins. Dr. Amen has a book, Brain in Love, and I mm. read it a lot because I had a tendency to to need someone in my life at all times. And I yes. actually now, I, I really love just factual information so you can go, I'm not a total freak that's got this, I'm not a love addict. This is actually what is happening to me on a level of this is uncontrollable of you can control how it affects you and what you're, I guess you kind what of learn to control your reaction. Exactly. Yeah. You can control your reaction. But when you love someone the first couple of months, you know, you do feel like you're high on drugs. It is. It is it's literally the same, a drug. It's the same drip. It, it really is. It's yeah. dopamine. And, I've, mean, and it's I kind of, he writes how it kind of goes from like more like cocaine, which is kind of a quick hit and wears off really quickly. So you need a lot of it. And then it becomes more like, you know, kind of like heroin where it's something that almost soothes you. Actually, I, I, I call, called the, the love of mine who I was with and we got divorced. It was almost like a pacifier. Like mm. it was that thing that I just needed, not because we were in comfort. love anymore right. but because of the comfort and because my brain said oh this feels better this is comforting yeah. but actually knowing that i was giving in to an addiction made me feel way worse i had the hangover mm. next day okay we sleep together next day we wake up i'm totally hung over yeah you know it felt like a relapse every time i go back well people do it to each other you know and it's not even anybody's fault it's like you you don't even realize that you're a part of this drug cycle yeah and then you get involved in that and then you find some new person and you yeah. get lit up yeah maybe some new person you see at the gym or at the office or wherever you meet people yeah. and you're like yeah, well, what's, well, what's funny well what's funny about this is like you know i guess i just realized something about myself is all of a sudden it's like unavoidable you know i'm telling you this is not true so this is where i now retract what i've said because i i need to I need to work on this a little bit. So it's like, okay, it's so untrue for me to see all these bad things. They're in my face no matter what, no matter what I want to look at or not. I have a really hard time looking at the good things. Like when people send me the stats of my song, I don't open it. Mm. When people send me the charts of the views, I don't open it. That's a good Because I don't want to get attached to success good. or numbers or mean that my art 
everyone said, literally, I'll show you the text from manager. He said, unless it's a drag queen death dropping to her new single, don't even bother sending it to her because she's not going to open it. But and I think I, that's good. That's a sign of you avoiding narcissism. But I wonder why I feel like I can avoid, I can't avoid the bad things and looking at them. Like I'm got maybe a little addiction of that, of looking at that. But then why don't I want the hit of the positivity of like seeing the numbers? Because you want to work hard. Because you want things to be difficult. When you see too much success, you don't want to slack off. I have and no get idea weak. how many people listen to my song. I have the same thing. Yeah, I can't. I have the same thing. I have the same thing with podcasts. I have the same thing with comedy specials. I don't read any of the reviews. I just keep moving. That's what I don't do. I always do, it. do that. And everyone's like, you want to hear some stats? I'm like, I, I literally, you can mm. ask them, I say, I won't even know what it means. Jamie will tell me some stats every now and then, and I'll just go, what the fuck? And I, go, I don't, I don't even know what it means. Anymore. Yeah. It's well, it gets nuts. Yeah, I don't know what it means. Yeah, what does it mean? And a lot of the three time, three million streams. A lot of like, the, what does that mean? A lot of in the, in the world of like how many seven billion? It's, yeah. it's never what good enough mean? for me. Doesn't mean. Oh, like keep, three million, seven going. billion. Ah, I could do better. Right. Exactly. Yeah, three it, million's not enough. Well, that's. I think that's a sign that you're looking at things the right way. I really do because I think that's good. a sign of you. You you know what you were talking about earlier. You want to struggle. You want to. You want to earn it. Yep. You know, and because you think that you kind of got these crazy gifts being famous at a young age and all this wealth and success at a young age. You want to earn it. So when you see success and the trappings of success or wallowing around in all of your fortune, you don't want to do that. No. You want to hustle. You want to keep going. I think that's a good sign. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. At some point, uh, you know. You can bring your kids. Maybe she can do that weird fucked up thing to my face. Whatever. <laughs> you should come and see some of the animals, especially when you're, in, you're in Nashville. I think you'll totally get it. I think you'll totally get if you're ever in Tennessee and you come out to the farm and you see the horses and you see the pigs bite my ankles and all these things. I'm sure. I think I think you'll you'll you're get a really balance. good understanding of, of my life and who I am. My last comedy special that I filmed uh, was Strange Times for Netflix, and when I was when I warm up for shows. I've done all the work. I like to just put my brain in another place. And I was listening to Malibu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and That's all, the, all the, what I thought you were going to say. All the people on the set were making fun of me. So I hard. My friend Anthony Giordano, who's, who also directs the UFC, by the way. Yeah, I couldn't he's imagine He's a good this. friend of mine. He's like, what, what are you listening to? I go, Miley Cyrus. And like, he's like, shut the fuck up. I go, look. I go, listen to it. I, I put the headsets on him. And I had him listen to it. But that song is so removed from anything in me or, or my life. And I love your voice. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. So it was, it's a little escape for me. That's cool. So I'd be like dancing backstage, high as fuck, getting ready to go on stage. Stage, listening to your song yeah like just well, that swaying was the first back song, and forth that was the first song well no because i had done dead pets uh dead pets was where i started writing like my music where if you know you look at the list it says because what's funny okay so if you look at stevie nick's songs things have changed a lot in in credits um a lot of it says written by stevie nicks and it doesn't says any other writers but there are other writers because there's music that was written she didn't play every guitar part and every piano part etc now it's changed in our credits and the way we do things so actually you have to put written by for anyone that wrote anything musical on the song so any guitar parts all that mm -hmm. shit so if you start looking at some of the dead pet stuff it'll say written by and it'll say a group of people but all the lyrics were written by me it's just any of the melodic stuff in the track. Is all that, that all stuff that's new for for money purposes? Yeah, so and the, I think the, the way that now streaming is, is kind of making oh, things okay. a little bit more difficult because yeah. you don't pay someone the way that you would a record. When a record sales, they right. get their money, whatever. So that it's something to do with that. It's very complex. And they say that some of the best lawyers don't even understand quite what's going on in the music industry right now because we're having such a uh, change, such a shift in the way that everything's happening. From sec sales of records sales to of streaming. Sales of records to streaming yeah. to videos to TikToks. TikTok is like a huh? freaking label now what? so they pay tiktokers to tiktok to your music because it counts as streams i don't even understand it what? i don't even understand it but this is a thing tiktok is weird do you pay attention to all that shit with it's like the chinese government owns it no it's very it's I, I mean i know that that's a thing i also know that it was like you know this is the new way of the new label ba basically labels pay tiktok mm -hmm. to to be able to have these kids doing i don't know if i'm supposed to say it but they fucking do so then i said it please say it um it's all i know is Speak. like it's true so say it so they pay, so they pay kids to tiktok to certain so say if you're a tiktoker yeah. you're like a big time TikToker. like there's like rich tiktokers that rich. are like that from like millions I don't know about millions. We have a, maybe a different idea of like Richie Rich, but for kids living in a house here that there's TikTok agencies, yes. TikTok agencies. agencies. So they like, uh, Marsha, I see you TikToking. It's Where like make Black big, big, Mirror. Big. I'm telling oh. you, it's like some fucked up Black Mirror shit. Wow, interesting. I didn't but know that. But the one thing that I told the kids that, you know, 
these kind of influencers. I've spoken to some of them before by doing some of this press. You know, they want me to play the song for them, whatever. And the one thing that I said that I like is like, at least it's kids creating content for themselves. Mm. Because I used to have to go through all the middlemen before before right. I could put out a fucking video. I had to ask, hey, Gary Marsh at Disney, is this okay? Hey, this person, can I do this? But now it's like, shit, grab your phone, put it up. You're in control of your own destiny in a Right, way. you could, I mean, if you wanted to, you could set your phone up and just I'm go saying. live on YouTube and play an acoustic set. And do whatever the fuck and I you love, want. I love that about that. So I love that about today. Yeah, me too. It's I love that. Amazing. Um, and yeah, so so kind of to that point was when I was working on Younger Now. That was the first record I was going to put out that was for sale because I did SoundCloud with my Flaming Lips record. So because I said people don't want to hear me singing a song called "Bang My Box" about me like having sex <laughs> at a lesbian strip club. Well, then I'm not going to ask them to buy it. I'm just going to give it to them as a gift. And you're really the worst thing they can do with a gift is throw it away or not open it. Like, well, that's you didn't a lose kind of money. A good thing of being in the position where you're in that you could call the shots. It's exactly. Like when I ask you, and Are you the boss? And it's like, listen, okay, you're not yeah. going to make money off of it. It's like, okay, that's fine. I'm sure they're still selling a toothbrush somewhere that plays my fucking song, and I'll get a dollar from that. Are there any TikTokers out there to bang my box? I don't think anyone's like TikToking to bang should. my box. Jamie, can you uh, research that, please? I, do, I honestly, I, I think bet. everything on the internet's been done, but I don't think people TikTok to bang I my box. I would love to see a bunch of RuPaul's drag queens TikToking to bang my box. I don't think it's happening. It bang should. my box is very, very niche. We could make that happen. I feel like we could put that out there into the internet. And Look, would, it's not, it's not there. Uh, I, I sort of found, I'm, now I'm trying to find a good version to show. I'm trying to be quick about it. So I'm scared. Well, scared. listen, Jamie can find it if it's out there. He has connections. To the, the dark, dark, the dark, dark web. web. That's what I was wondering. You got that hooked, <laughs> you got that hooked up here into the ground. He's the best Googler on the planet. There's no one even close. Yes. He's a one-handed best Googler, too. I know. Look at this. He, he Googles with one hand while he's working I the camera with the other. One. Oh, my God. Go. <laughs> Let me give me some volume. Uh, let me hear a little bit. Look at this guy. I gotta figure out how to get Woo. This sound on this sound. So we got um, a dude. Oh. Okay. There you go. Look, this is how See? shit it is. It's got two fucking likes. Listen, one, for now it has two likes. <laughs> now people know about it. I know. Now it'll have more. Now he's an influencer. I'll retweet that shit later. Send that to me and I'll retweet it. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to bang my box. But point being is that that was free, and then getting to write Younger Now and writing Malibu, I wrote that in the yeah. back of the car on the way to vo on the going to the Voice because I was looking outside the window in the car, thinking like all of it's true. Like I had never really gone to the beach. The closest yeah. I ever really gotten was my parents taking me to Florida like one time, and my sister got my toe caught in the uh, revolving door, and like I had to go to the hospital. It was a nightmare, and my parents swore we're never going on vacation again. But most parents say it, don't mean it. My parents fucking meant it. Meant it. We never went on vacation again. That's crazy that you did all that work and you never went on vacation. Well, I went on my own vacations. We didn't go on a family vacation. That song is so obviously written by you. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I think I liked about it. That it was, uh, when you listen to someone sing a song, like a really good song, it's an expression of who they are at that point in time in their life. And you can mm -hmm. get wrapped up in their mind, you mm -hmm. know? And I felt like, that's why I like listening to other people. I like listening to songs before I go on stage because it gets me out of my own head mm -hmm. and it gets me into someone else's head. And then when it's time to go, you know, and they're like, you're on in three. Like, okay, and then I'll take the headphones off. I'll do a shot. I'll stretch out a little. And then here we go. That's me. Oh, hell yeah. That is. That's me listening to your fucking song that's backstage. That's crazy. Yeah. Legit. I'm not lying. That's nuts. Well, it's an honor. I play that <laughs> when Anthony was listening to it. He's like, you fucking idiot. What are you listening to? That's fucking wild. Well, I, I like never, it. ever, ever would have thought that. Never would have thought yeah, that. I like it. Thank you. I like your music. Thank you. And I like you. You're a good person. Thank you so you much, are. you too. I enjoyed talking to you. I did too. I'm Thank glad you. we did this. Agreed. So um, you got something that's out right now. Yeah. What is it? How do people get it? Well, uh, it's called Midnight Sky and... Even just the title is kind of inspired by Debbie Harry's Heart of Glass, but I pulled inspiration from Edge of Seventeen, two of my favorite songs. Heart of Glass, the reason I love it so much is that the title isn't the repetition in the chorus. It's just a cool thing to say. It's not the chorus at all. Um, and so I thought, you know what, my favorite part about it is is I love the, the kind of visual painting of Midnight Sky and what that means. Um, and the midnight sky to me is like if you're really fucking partying, the moon is a disco ball and the stars are all the reflection of light on the ceiling. And what I really like about the disco ball is that it's a bunch of broken pieces put back together again that when you're finally enlightened, it makes this mesmerizing, totally attractive like people. It's like, you know, 
it's like the bugs to the light. Like people love disco balls, but it's really just a bunch of broken pieces put together. And so I felt like that was reflective of me. Wow. Pretty deep to think about a disco That's ball. That's heavy. Yeah. That's heavy. But when I saw it, I thought like, I recognize this. This is what I feel like. All right. So that's it. Let's end it on that. And it's everywhere. It's on YouTube, streaming, and yeah, it's everywhere. And Miley I'm naked Cyrus. in it, so hopefully people will watch it. All right. You're a bad motherfucker. Thank you. You Thank too. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Cool. I like being in here. This is...